Has the live stream started? No. Thank you. I will go to each member of the council to confirm that they can hear and be heard. This is a legal requirement for me to do so. Please verbally confirm that you are able to hear me and I will confirm in response that I can hear you. Councillor Graham Andrews. I can hear you, Chairman, thank you. I can hear you too and see you. Councillor Paul Andrews. Good afternoon, Chairman. Yes, I can hear and see you. And I can hear and see you too, thank you. Councillor Polly Andrews. Councillor Polly Andrews. Ah, can you see and hear us, Councillor Andrews? You're muted. I've unmuted myself twice. Uh, can you see, I can see and hear you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Councillor Andrews. Councillor Jenny Bartlett. Good afternoon, Chairman. Yes, I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you too. Thank you. Councillor Chris Bartram. I can hear you, Mr. Chairman. I can hear you and see you too. Makes it better. Councillor Christy Bilderson. Afternoon, Chair. I can hear and see you. And I'd just like to advise that I've got some internet in instability, so my video may uh, turn off during, during the session. Thank you. I can see and hear you now, though. Thank you. Councillor Dave Bilter. Good afternoon, Chair. I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you too. Thank you. Councillor Tracy Bowes. Good afternoon, everyone. I can see and hear you, Chair. I can't see you. I can hear you. Um, is, your, is your video working? Yeah, it appears to be. I, can't I can see, see myself on the screen. I can see you now. Yes, thank you. Councillor Ellie Charles. Afternoon, Chair. Thank you. I can hear and see you. Thank you, I can hear and see you too. Councillor Pauline Crockett. She may still be driving into Plough Lane. Councillor yes, Chair, Robert she hasn't Crockett. come back to me yet. Sorry? Yes, uh, Chair, um, it's Councillor Tyler. She, I've still not heard of Councillor Crockett, so she Thank must... Okay. okay, we'll hope to catch up with her soon. Councillor Gemma Davis. Good afternoon, Chair, I can see and hear you. Thank you, I can see and hear you too. Councillor Barry Durkin. Good afternoon, Chairman. I can see and I can hear you. Good afternoon, Councillor Durkin. I can see and hear you too. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Tony Fagan. Good afternoon, Chair. I can see and hear you. Thank you. I can see and hear you too. Councillor Elizabeth Foxton. Good afternoon, Chair. I can see and hear you. Thank you. I can see and hear you too. Very well. Councillor Carol Gandhi. Afternoon, Chair. I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you too. Thank you. Councillor Kima Guthrie. Good afternoon, Chairman. I can see and hear you. Good, I can see and hear you too. Thank you, Vice Chairwoman. Uh, Councillor John Hardwick. Councillor John Hardwick. Good afternoon, Chairman. I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you now as well. Thank you. Councillor John Harrington. Thank you, Chairman. I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you too. Thank you. Are you in Hawaii? <laughs> Councillor Liz Harvey. Afternoon, Chair. I can see and hear you. Thank you. I can see and hear you too. Councillor Jenny Hewitt. Good afternoon, Chair. I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you too. Thank you. Councillor Kath A. Afternoon, Chair. I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you as well. Councillor David Hitchener. Uh, good afternoon, Chairman. Yes, I can hear and see you. Thank you. Thank you. I can hear and see you as well. Councillor Philip Howells. Good afternoon, Chairman. Yes, I can see and hear you. Thank you. I can see and hear you too. Councillor Helen Ianson. Good afternoon, Chairman. I can see and I can hear you. I can see and hear you too. Thank you. Councillor Terry James. Thank you, Chairman. I can see and hear you clearly. I can see and hear you clearly too. Excellent. Councillor Peter Ginman. Yes, good afternoon, Chairman. I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you too. Thank you. Councillor Tony Johnson. Good afternoon, Chairman. I can see and hear you clearly. Good afternoon to you as well, and I can see and hear you clearly as well. Councillor Graham Jones. 
Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you too. Thank you. Councillor Mike Jones. Good afternoon, Chairman. I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you too. Thank you. Councillor Jim Kenyon. Hi there, Chairman. I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you too, Councillor. Councillor Jonathan Lester. Good afternoon, Chairman. I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you too. Thank you. Councillor Trish Marsh. Yes, I can hear and see you, Chairman. I can hear and see you as well. Thank you. Councillor Bob Matthews. Yeah, you and see you, Chairman. Thank you. I can see and hear you too. Thank you. Councillor Mark Milmore. Good afternoon, Chairman. Yes, I can see and hear you clearly. Thank you. I can see and hear you clearly as well. Councillor Jeremy Milne. Good afternoon, Chair. I can hear and see you too. I can hear and see you as well. Thank you. Councillor Felicity Norman. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Yes, I can see and hear you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. I can see and hear you well too. Councillor Roger Phillips. Perhaps he's still on his way in. Councillor Tim Price. Afternoon, Chairman. I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you as well. Thank you. Councillor Paul Roan. Yeah, good afternoon, Chair. Good afternoon, everybody. I can hear and see you. I can hear and see you as well. Thank you. Councillor Alan Seldon. Yes, good afternoon, Chair and everyone. Clearly with sound and vision. Well done. I can hear and see you as well. Thank you. Councillor Nigel Shaw. Good afternoon, Chair. I can hear and see you. Thank you. I can hear and see you as well. Thank you. Councillor Louis Stark. Yeah, afternoon, everyone. I can hear and see you, Chair. Thank you very much. I can hear and see you as well. Thank you. Councillor John Stone. Good afternoon, Chairman. I can see and hear you. Thank you, Councillor. I can see and hear you too. Councillor David Summers. Good afternoon, all. I can see and hear. I can see and hear you too. Thank you. Councillor Elissa Swinglehurst. Good afternoon, Chair. I can hear and see you. I can hear and see you as well. Thank you. Councillor Paul Simmons. I can see and hear you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can see and hear you as well. Councillor Kevin Tillett. Good afternoon, Chair. I can... Good afternoon, Chair. I can hear and see you clearly. Thank you. I can hear and see you as well. Thank you. I thought you were going to say it's behind you, but it's not. Councillor Diana Toynbee. Good afternoon, Chair. I can see you and hear you. Thank you. Thank you. I can see and hear you too. Councillor Ange Tyler. Good afternoon, Chair. I can see and hear you too. I can see and hear you very well. Thank you. Councillor Yolandi Watson. Uh, good afternoon, Chair. I can hear you and see you. Um, oh, I can see and hear you now as well. Thank you very much indeed. Councillor William Wilding. Afternoon all. Yes, Chair, I can hear and see. Thank you. I can see and hear you as well. Thank you. Uh, can I check with Democratic Services if any members are in the waiting room and need to be admitted now? Uh, Chairman, we have Councillor Crockett in the waiting room. Right. Uh, bring her in. Has she arrived yet? It's taking its time, I'm afraid, Chairman. Don't worry. Is Councillor Phillips in the in the building? Um, I'm afraid not. Had not had any word yet, Chairman. Right. Well, when he does arrive, we'll have to have a brief pause and admit him. Chairman, I believe Councillor Phillips is due to arrive momentarily. He's just asked for the link for the meeting, so we're we're just uh, making sure he's got it. Right. Okay. That's great. Was that Councillor Crockett? Councillor Can Crockett's arrived, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Crockett, I can't see you yet. Can you make yourself known to us? Yes, Chair, I'm here. I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you behind your huge mask. <laughs> Sorry, I'm in Plough Lane, so obviously we have to stick to the rules. You know, I just wondered, that's all right, that's fine. Thank you. I shall strike you off now. 
don't strike me off, please. Sorry? Don't strike me off, please. <laughs> strike you off my list. I mean, what I, thank you. Uh, I can actually see and hear you very well. Thank you. Um, any sign of Councillor Phillips yet? Not as of yet, Chair. Do you think it'll be it's worth waiting for? Can I suggest, Chair, that you um, continue with the introduction and then we'll invite Councillor Phillips once he's in the building. I would have the same feeling as well. Well, good afternoon again. I would like to welcome everyone to today's virtual meeting. Good to see almost all of you here. The Council is video and audio streaming this meeting live on the internet and making an official recording. The recording forms part of the public record of the meeting. Please note that it is a legal requirement that every member attending virtual meetings is able to hear and where practicable see and be heard and where practicable be seen by the other members in attendance and the public watching. So I ask that you please have your audio switched on and where you are able to do so, you also have your video enabled. For virtual meetings, there are a number of additional points for members of the council and officers to be aware of. All microphones, apart from mine, will be placed on mute at the start and during the meeting. Where a member has raised their virtual hand or raised a point of order, I will call on you to speak. Democratic Services will invite you to unmute your microphone to contribute to the debate. Where members exceed the time limit for speeches, their microphone will be placed on mute after a brief period of grace. Please be aware, members, that a clock will be used at this meeting to time member contributions to debates. The clock will be visible in the Zoom platform. When you wish to speak, please use the raise hand button. If you have updated your Zoom account, this will appear under the reactions button at the bottom of your screen. If you have not updated your account, the raise hand icon will be against your name in the participants list which should be on the right of your screens. I will invite members to speak in order of hands being raised. Private chat has been enabled for this meeting. Please can members ensure that the facility is only used to communicate with me as the chairman, via Mr. Coleman, to raise a point of order or to explain that you need to leave the meeting. Voting will be undertaken electronically using the voting software within the virtual meeting platform. In the event that electronic voting is not possible to use, or there is a technical failure, I will ask each member by means of a roll call to indicate if they are for, against, or are abstaining. Please be aware, members, that at this meeting, I will call for a comfort break at 3.30 p.m. approximately. Good. Chairman, I'm advised that Councillor Phillips is in the waiting room. Councillor Phillips, can you see and hear us? Can we have him admitted, please? Otherwise, I'll go on to apologies for absence. Item one, apologies for absence. I've received no apologies so far. Are there any apologies? Councillor Phillips is obviously on his way. No other apologies then. Thank you. Item two, declarations of interest. To receive declarations of interest in respect of Schedule 1, Schedule 2, or other interests from members in respect of items on the agenda. The next item is to receive any declarations of interest by members in respect of items on this agenda. If any member does need to leave the meeting while an item is discussed, they will be placed in the virtual waiting room until that item has been concluded. Members who have declared an interest and withdrawn from the meeting will be readmitted once the item has been concluded. Do any members have any interests to declare? No interest to declare. Thank you. Um, so, sorry, yeah. Chairman. There are virtual hands being raised for declaration oh, of interests. Ah, thank you. Councillor Bowes? 
What is your, what is your interest? Thank you, uh, Chair. I have a Schedule 1 interest as my property is adjacent to the proposed Western Bypass. I have a dispensation which has been approved by the monitoring officer to represent the views of my ward. That dispensation is on my file. Thank you very much. Very clear. Councillor G. Andrews. You have a declaration? Yeah, I can echo exactly the same as uh, Councillor Bernstein. I have a, a Schedule 1, which has been approved by the Clare Ward. Thank you very much. Councillor Bilderson, you also have a declaration. Yes, I do, Chair. I have a Schedule 1 interest in relation to the South Wide Transport Package. However, I have received a dis dispensation to speak as Ward Councillor, and my dispensation is attached to my Register of Interest form. Thank you very much. Councillor Matthews. Yeah, just to mention, uh, <clears throat> I think it's right and proper that the Western Link Road does pass through my ward. So I think it's right and proper I mention it. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, and for members to clearing an interest, please complete the template that will be emailed to you and return it to Democratic Services. Thank you. Is Chairman. Chairman. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Councillor Hitchner, you're also raising a hand, are you? Yes, you are. Yes, now. I have a declaration of uh, interest, which... Um, uh, for which I also have a dispensation. Thank you. And Councillor Summers. I'm in the South Y, so the South Y transport might, might affect me. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Mill. Uh, yes, I have a schedule tool in that I am a committee member for the Her Hereford and Worcester Gardens and Parks Trust, which is an interest in the protection of the Repton's landscape park at Belmont. And I'm an, also a member of the informal group known as the Hereford Transport Alliance, which seeks to promote modal shift to sustainable forms of transport board. Nonetheless, I wish to state that I, I will be keeping an open mind through the debate, taking note of recommendations made to Council today. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's a very comprehensive uh, reply. Uh, Councillor Crockett. Thank you, Chair. I wonder if I could have clarity, please, because the proposed Western Bypass would go through my ward, which is the Queenswood ward. So do I need to declare an interest? We'll go to uh, the uh, monitoring officer and see, get her opinion, please. As a ward councillor, there's no need to declare. It's only if you have land uh, next to or could be affected by the road schemes. I thought that was right, but I just wanted to uh, clarify it. Thank you. Good, thank you. And we have Councillor Hardwick as well. Well, I've just taken my uh, hand down, Chairman, because um, I have a similar question to Councillor Crockett, because an eastern uh, crossing would uh, come into my ward, but uh, I've got no land adjacent to it, so I've no need to declare an interest. That's fine. Uh, any other interest to declare? Thank you. Uh, is Councillor Phillips uh, available yet? Uh, yes, Chair, Councillor Phillips has joined. Can we see him, please? Can we, and hear him. Councillor Phillips. Yes, thank you, Chairman. I'm ensconced now into Plough Lane and I can see and hear everyone, including yourself. Thank you very much indeed. I can see and hear you clearly. Doesn't look very much like Plough Lane to me, but there we are. <laughs> very clever technology. Right. Next is questions from members of the public. There have been 12 questions submitted under this item. The questions and responses have been published as a supplement. Members of the public who have submitted a question have been offered the opportunity to ask a supplementary question by email, an audio or video file, or as a virtual participant. A supplementary question must relate to the original question raised and must not take the form of a statement. Supplementary questions are limited to one minute in length. If the question is likely to exceed one minute or takes the form of a statement, the virtual participant's microphone will be placed on mute and it will be requested that the question is put immediately. Mrs. Prothero has not submitted a question. Uh, Ms. Stace has uh, opted to be a virtual attendee. Ms. Stace. Will you ask your question? Sorry, you on me? Sorry. Yes, if I may ask my question. Hang on a moment. Um, so, 
Yeah, you're... Her... Sorry, I'm, I'm asking my main question, yes? So Herefordshire Wildlife Trust supports the cessation of all... Your supplementary question. Oh, my supplementary question. Uh, okay, my supplementary question is um, so I would like to seek reassurance on the question of the, the Eastern Bypass. Um, plans for an Eastern Bypass have been raised many times and I've been in the county 26 years. And this is about the third time it's come up. So I want to be absolutely assured that the council understands that this has been thrown out several times already on the environmental damage that it, that, that it, it might do. Um, and it seems to me uh, and to the Wildlife Trust, um, a bit of a nonsense to be looking at it again. Can we have assurances that the, the, the environmental damage will be um, very rigorously considered? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Harrington. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Stace. Um, I'm not sure if you're relating to a bypass up to, by, by that you meaning up to the Worcester Road or if you meaning the link that we intend to progress. Well, I think I think both because the link. That okay, yeah, understood. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. So, just for clarity, this coalition has no intention of taking a link road if that is found to be the best solution, further than the further than the Ledbury Road. Um, we will do all the required consultation and assessment and impact assessments and consider that fully before any plans. That's a guarantee. We are here to consider the resilience, the resilience um, benefits of another bridge. We're not simply trying to replace a Western bypass with an Eastern bypass. And we believe that the resilience need of another bridge is an important one to consider, but we have to fact that very carefully against the ecological and environmental damage. And that, that is a promise from us. Uh, thank you, Councillor Harrington. Uh, Mr. Morfitt, his supplementary question is, with all due respect, you have not answered my question. I asked if retaining the SWTP as an unfunded zombie project would hamper the Council's emergency response to climate change, introducing modern sustainable transport solutions. Would it not seriously hamper new designs? For example, mass transit options along the Abergavenny corridor include reopening the Pontrilus rail station to reduce commuter and school traffic into Hereford on the Belmont Road, supported by our MP and the Welsh Government. Surely this would be far less of a priority if you retained the unfunded SWTP. In the previous administration, all sustainable transport infrastructure was planned to be implemented after road construction. Since the SWTP project was dead on arrival, having its funding withdrawn by the March's lap, even before a strategic review was completed, is there not a clear case for a clean sweep on designs to enable an urgent response to the climate emergency? Councillor Harrington. Thank you, Mr. Morford. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Morford. Um, I'm sorry that my original answer didn't uh, satisfy it. I can, I can say on record that uh, I do personally believe the South Y transport package does not work and the South Y Southern Link Road at moments does not serve a purpose. And in, in a sense, it is a zombie project. It has no funding. It requires further planning permission. It will require business case to be completed. And until a river crossing is achieved or other measures are put in place, it will not have the desired effect of achieving um, better, better pollution and congestion reduction in the South Y area in particular. Um, I do think there are other measures that can be implemented much quicker. It's important also to remember that the active travel measures within that package can be with retained within our policies that we're proposing. Finally, the question that, that he was really getting to, which I think um, I should answer on the third attempt, the resource implications are large. If you concentrate, we, we only have a limited amount of, of resource in the county in terms of revenue and offices. If we want to concentrate on something, to get something done quickly, we need to decide what that is. And having a project that is not a sound project at the moment in our capital programme will hamper that. Uh, thank you, Councillor. 
We now come to Mr. Palgrave, and I have a, a written question as a supplementary. Thank you for your answer, which confirms that the preparatory work done so far on the Southern Link Road is likely to need updating to reflect movement in national and local policy on climate change. Variations have been made to the design of the SLR since planning permission was granted in 2016. And I understand officers have said that further permissions will be needed for these variations before the SLR design and procurement can be, take, can be taken forward. Together with the absence of funding, would you agree with me that these points illustrate the SLR is far from a shovel-ready project? Yes. Harrington. Yes, Chairman. That is the short answer. I do agree entirely. Thank you very much. Uh, I have no supplementary from Mrs. Palgrave, but I do have some more to come. Mr. Franklin. He has a supplementary question, which I'll now read to you. It seems to me that the short answer to my question is no. In my original question here, and that to Cabinet on January the 21st, and I thank the Cabinet member for his response, I have attempted to discover whether adequate cost-benefit analyses were carried out and whether these would support the change in transport policy. It would seem that these analyses do not exist, and I'm left with the impression that thus far, the proposed policy change rests almost entirely on qualitative judgments, which are necessarily subjective. What steps have been taken to ensure that throughout the process of policy change, from the initial announcement of pause and review, through the selection of consultants and the scooping of the review, the selection of options for consideration and future implementation, that obtaining best value for money and the best outcome for the citizens of Herefordshire as a whole, can and will be demonstrated. Councillor Harrington. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think I understand what Mr. Franklin is asking. The short answer is that in any consultation or analysis, there is, there is not perfection. Um, we know that the assessments taken forward, taken the, the assessments done by our consultants, WSP, were based on quantitative and qualitative. The majority were qualitative, qualitative. They were based on decisions and qualitative assessment, qualitative assessments by experts, taking into account modeling and making extrapolations and assessments for them. I'm satisfied that's been done to a good enough standard. What McDonald's have reviewed that as a critical friend, they're satisfied that's been done to a good enough standard. This was a, a relatively high level review. It is not furnished with the same detail that was produced for the advancement of the Southern Link Road uh, or the Hereford Transport Package, for example. That is the work that we wish to proceed at pace. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor. We now have a supplementary question from Dr. Geeson, and I'll read it to you. Most heavy traffic approaching Hereford City from the south uses the A465 Abergavenny Road or A49 Ross Road, converging at Asda Roundabout and Greyfriars Bridge. A southern link road would link these roads, completing a triangle. As I understand it, if the SLR were built, a traffic regulation order would put restrictions on the types and therefore numbers of vehicles using the Belmont Road. This is supposed to facilitate measures such as a bus lane, and imagine a lorry coming north towards Hereford from Pontrilas on the Abergavenny Road. At the junction with a new SLR, Due to new restrictions, it would turn right onto the SLR. If it needed to access Hereford City, it would then turn left onto the A49 Ross Road at Grafton Roundabout. Surely such lorries would add to traffic already using the A49 Ross Road, increasing congestion and air pollution in e.g. Redhill. I have looked at the modeling figures you mentioned in the reply to my first question, and as you say, they show some decreases in traffic flow on parts of the A49, which seems strange in the light of the proposed Belmont Road restrictions. Please can you explain how such decreases in traffic flow could happen? Perhaps the model assumes a large volume of traffic from the SLR traveling east to Rotherwas, rather than north to Hereford City. But is that likely, Councillor Harrington? 
Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mrs. Geeson, for that question. It's, it's quite a technical question, but I think I can I can uh, have a go at it, and if not, I'll provide a written answer afterwards. Um, studies show the, the original assessment and uh, work done does show um, both an increase and a reduction on the Ross Road. It shows a uh, it shows uh, an increase around junctions and a decrease on some other parts of the road. Um, the critical element is that that assessment was done without factoring in induced demand. The work that was done, for example, on the Hereford Transport strate Strategic Review that we've just done did factor in induced demand. So before I answer that definitively, I think we need to, to, to get a further understanding on that from, uh, from the consultants. But it, it, essentially my belief is, and my understanding is that without another river crossing, it doesn't matter whether you're coming in on the on the Belmont Road or if you're coming in on the Ross Road, you're just moving traffic from one road to another. There may be some slight improvements because you now have further junctions at which to slightly vary your trip, but essentially the traffic movements and the traffic direction of flow and the desire lines remain the same. Thank, thank you, Councillor. That is interesting. A supplementary question from Mrs. Sharp, and I'll read it to you. Historically, there's been little or no capital funding to help schools deliver ambitions for active school travel, and uh, school playing fields have been sacrificed to provide increased car parking. With some areas of Hereford suffering much higher levels of childhood obesity um, than other national, than, rather than the national average, is the prioritization of safe active travel measures to school in Hereford, supported by the Children and Young People Scrutiny Committee and Directorate, as well as the Health and Wellbeing Board and the Public Health Officer. I think possibly we need to apply from the scrutiny and perhaps the Wellbeing, uh, wellbeing Board. Uh, the uh, Chair of Children's Scrutiny, do you wish to make a, a quick answer to that? I know it's pushed upon you rather rapidly. Councillor Gandhi? Um, I would have thought it would be the portfolio holder rather than myself. Well, I thought you'd be involved as well. I'm going to come to the portfolio holder later on. Well. I mean, we've done some work um, on child obesity in Herefordshire, um, and we've looked at some of the issues surrounding that regard to regarding to um, diabetes, and um, obviously um, COVID plays a part in this. Um, and there are obviously measures that government has put in place to try to reduce this. Um, but ultimately, um, we, are, we are living in a generation where children, for whatever reason, um, don't walk very far, don't play outside, tend to use computer games, um, and the lockdown really doesn't help that. Thank you. Uh can the cabinet member or the for the yeah. this particular item respond? And the, uh, and the well I can. In, I, Thank you. Well, oh, sorry. Who are you asking? The, the infrastructure cabinet member, or no? I think the cabinet member for um, well sure. to do with school transport. Chair, is that you, Councillor? Well, it, 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 it's, both, it's both of us, Chair. Um, I'm very happy to say that. Um, my, our directorate is absolutely in favour of encouraging children to walk to school. We recognise obesity problems. There are a whole raft of reasons why that is a good idea, help to reduce the congestion in the city. So everything we can do to improve that, we will do. And I am already talking to Councillor Harrington and his officers about what more we can do on that uh, particular issue. So that is something we will be taking forward, as well, of course, talking to schools and helping them to develop green travel plan. So yes, very much behind that. Thank you very much. Councillor Crockett, do you want to have your word? Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, the concerns regarding childhood obesity are obviously um, with us all at the Health and Wellbeing Board. And this item is on the board's agenda. And we are looking at that with the public health team's assistance. Thank you. Uh, we come now to a supplementary question from Mrs. Richards. Uh, please confirm that the real reasons why housing at Three Elms in the urban village and lower Bullingham has not been developed as proposed by the adopted court strategy. 
is not to do with a lack of a new 60 mile per hour road through the new housing estates in the west of the city, but A, the inflated housing growth figures, B, the flood risk associated with the proposed development sites in Hereford, and C, the risk of contamination of underground freshwater supplies to two of the largest employers in Hereford, posing a risk to over 5,000 jobs in the city and more within the supply chain. I think Councillor Harrington again. Thank you, Chairman. Can I just ask, first of all, Chairman, if I can answer the previous question, since it's my portfolio? Sorry, it, it, yes, of course you can. I just, yeah, I'm I sorry. Just mean you there. Thank, no, that's fine. I thought, I thought uh, maybe we'd done the round rob and then we, we'd run out of time. But um, I think the question relates probably to an underlying um, point that Mrs Sharp is trying to make. We did used to have proper funding for adult, uh, sorry, for school travel plans. Uh, and we did used to put much more effort into um, working with schools and to providing um, provision and training for cyclists uh, and, and, and pedestrians. We don't do that anymore because the money, the revenue, the little revenue that we have has been concentrated on uh, pushing forward two rather large road schemes. So that there has been a distinct disadvantage created by the determination to pursue road schemes against a, a more balanced uh, approach. And I think that has impacted, maybe not so much as increased car parking, I take that point, but I think just generally around revenue, we have lost revenue and we have refocused it in other areas, which is not helped by a general cut from government. Thank you. And this is Mrs. Richard's supplementary question. Yes, I mean, there, I, I, in essence, she's correct. Permission already exists, as we know, for houses to begin if the condition, if the other conditions are met. Uh, we also know that the inspector of the core strategy in 2015 did not base her acceptance of allocations of strategic housing in the west of the of the city on the provision of a bypass. Uh, so essentially, what is holding up progression at the moment are the issues that Mrs. Richard has raised. It's as simple as that. Thank you. And now we come to a supplementary question from Mrs. Moria Wecker, which I'll read out to you. The Herefordshire Council Land Drainage Report, November 2020, on the Three Elms development says, the bypass is also likely to require provision of floodplain compensation to the west of the bypass in the area of the proposed employment land. The partial realignment of the Yeza Brook to move the watercourse south and facilitate an improved crossing beneath the bypass and the provision of surface water attenuation basins that will drain to the Yezo Brook. If the council doesn't cancel the Western Relief Road, where are Herefordshire Council anticipating the 1,200 new householders work when the construction of the road requires the Three Elms employment site to become a vast floodplain upstream of the city? And what risk does this new floodplain pose to the city of Hereford situated downstream of this location, considering weather events in recent years. Councillor Harrington, I think it's yours again. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mrs. Morawiecka. It's, uh, it's a good question. It's similar to Mrs. Richards in many ways. Um, there are issues associated with bringing forward this site. Um, there are issues in relation to floodplains and to the water table and to abstraction and to making sure that the two large businesses that are close by, Avara and Heineken, are, are not affected adversely in any way. Um, that is a question that we would need to consider to, 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 uh, to ponder. Um, it's as simple as that. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harrington. And the final supplementary question is from Ms Smith. In 2015, we advised Herefordshire Council to conduct a full land survey, including FRA, on the southern and northern boundaries of the Roman Road, but no action taken. There are many overground and underground streams in the area which have not been identified or mapped. Those on the northern boundary flow under the Roman Road to Yezo Brook, S-I-N-C. Huntington Hamlet and the surrounding areas increasing the flood risk south. We are asking Herefordshire Council to conduct a survey as a matter of urgency. And due to climate change, storms have become more frequent, winters wetter, and the land waterlogged. 
Flood events increasing and water levels rising rapidly over wider areas not known to previously flood. Due to PAs being passed, planning applications being passed on floodplains and sustainable urban drainage systems drainage being used, surface waters cannot always be contained on site. Well, this one, hmm, hardly a question. Uh, Councillor Harrington, do you want to have a quick shot of that? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's as you say, Chairman, it's, it's not necessarily a question, but I, I think I get the drift. Obviously, this is prior to my post, uh, being in post. I, I can discuss with officers and provide Miss Smith with a response. But um, I, I appreciate the ecological value of the area around um, Huntington and, 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 and Huntington and Yeza Brook. Um, and if there's good evidence presented to us to take forward a study, I think that's something that I would support. Uh, thank you. And if your written response can be um, put, put forward as well, that'd be very useful, I think. Thank you. Mr. Price has no supplementary question to ask. That, that is the end of the questions from the public. Thank you very much to all those who asked. Uh, we have no questions from members of the council, item four, so that makes life a bit easier. Um, we now go on to item number five. Meet of the meeting. Hereford Transport Strategy. To consider Cabinet's recommendation to stop progress on the Western Bypass and Southern Link Road schemes, which are included in the adopted core strategy and local transport plan, and to approve the removal of the Hereford Transport Package and South Y Transport Package from the capital programme. Before we start this item, please can the monitoring officer provide some guidance to the meeting on predetermination and bias. Thank you, Chairman. I have written to all councillors in the last couple of days, but further to that note, can I remind you that to take part in the debate today and use your vote, you must evidence that your approach is objective and fair, that you will consider the debate with an open mind and be clear that your decision will be firmly based on all the relevant material and issues heard at this meeting. Please be reminded that if a councillor has a closed mind on a matter before voting on an issue, that council will be said to be predetermined. If there is evidence of predetermination by one or more councillors, then the council decision could be subject to a successful judicial review claim. The decision would be quashed by the High Court and the council would have to reconsider and remake the decision without the predetermination. If any member has expressed views on the Hereford Transport Strategy prior to today, they do seriously need to consider if they can participate. The more extreme and firm views expressed before this debate, then it is more difficult to show that you still have an open mind. You must be prepared today to reconsider the item in light of the material and arguments presented. If you cannot do this, then you should not take part in the debate or use your vote. Thank you very much, Honourable uh, Officer. I now call on Councillor Chans to make a statement to Council. Councillor Chans. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to apologise sincerely to colleagues and residents for any confusion or concern caused by the poor choice of words I used on TV last week. I should have said explicitly, specifically, that our coalition cabinet had voted in December to recommend stopping the proposed bypass. But I do absolutely recognise that this meeting of full council now needs to consider that cabinet recommendation. And I'd like to assure colleagues that I'll consider the debate with an open mind today and come to a view based on the evidence before us in all of the papers and also all the contributions in the debate today. Um, I'd also like to take this opportunity to apologise to my hardworking colleagues on the City Council for speaking prematurely about fantastic work they've been doing with the Stronger Towns Board around the bid for ele electric buses. You know, it's a fantastic project and I got carried away in my enthusiasm. So I can all look for the City Council. I'll choose my words more carefully in future. Apologies again. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jones. We'll now go to the Cabinet Member Infrastructure and Transport who will move and introduce the report. He has five minutes and you will see your clock coming up in a moment. Councillor Harrington. Thank you, Chairman. Has the clock started? Okay. Yes, it hasn't arrived yet. Um, okay. can services, can we have the clock please on screen? Go on, Maybe. do uh, I can do it from here too, for that matter. Well, I did it seven times and got six different results, so. 
Well, this is very clever. Right. <laughs> I will stop what you know. Okay, start. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, colleagues. Um, I will try to be as brief as I can, partly because uh, I'm going to be timed out regardless if I'm not, but also because I know many people want to speak in the room today. The report you have before you is quite specific and focused on budget and process issues. Although it is important to note the implications and the broader transport strategy context that lies behind that. In simple terms, this report is asking the permission of fellow councillors to stop progressing two existing road schemes, the Hereford Transport Package, which contains a Hereford Relief Road, and also the South Wide Transport Package, which contains a Southern Link Road, together which both forming the Western Bypass as planned by the previous administration. This report also asks councillors permission to remove the budget lines associated with those two schemes and to cover the necessary decapitalization with reserves. This will allow us to proceed with a new and refreshed transport strategy informed by the lengthy review and stakeholder work we have done, the recommendations of the General Scrutiny Committee and also the recommendations of Cabinet. I believe this is a strategy that is more in step with the world we find ourselves in today, that is more layered and multifaceted and a better fit for the county and the city and for the protection of our environment. A policy that will focus on enabling modal shift in the city by real significant and proper investment in cycling and walking infrastructure, freeing up for the roads that must, freeing up the roads for those that must use them because they live further afield or they have to travel by car for personal circumstances, but encouraging those that can to travel a different way and providing with them with those options and infrastructure. A policy which would include serious investment in addressing our school transport issues, something we have woefully neglected in the past and which has been touched on in questions by members of the public. A policy which allows us to develop a city and county-wide electric or hydrogen bus system, a high frequency service that echoes the previous Hereford Hopper model that everyone in the county remembers so fondly. A policy that includes another river crossing to the east near Pontrilus, sorry, <laughs> near Rotherwas to support the businesses at the enterprise zone and to provide residents with network resilience, and which will cost less than half the cost of, an, of a Western bypass, which at over a quarter of a billion pounds is the most expensive option on, the, on offer, has the most damaging impact on our environment and has been worked on for 12 years and has a further year, 10 years to go, 25 years of lost opportunity. I will also add that we are progressing a railway station at Pont Rilis, and that is looking very promising. Our proposed transport strategy is in line with the climate emergency declared by both Parliament and Herefordshire Council. It's also entirely aligned with the transport strategy direction given to us by the National Conservative Government and the Secretary of State for Transport, Grant Shapps, who said decarbonisation of transport was the priority of his government strategy and was essential for us to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050, something which we are now required to do so by law. By saying, if we take anything away from the discussion today, I hope one thing is the understanding that we're all trying to do what is right or what we believe is right for Herefordshire. And we have all considered that in the context of the local connectivity and the wider implications of any impact on our environment. I may disagree often strongly with other members in this room, but I respect you all, regardless of politics or affiliation, because we are all giving up our time and energy to serve our communities to the best of our abilities. In circumstances we have inherited, often a thankless and all-consuming task. The decision today does not preclude us from doing anything that we would want to do as an administration. It directly enables us to do that. I personally think that this report, I personally recommend this report and hope its acceptance enables us to finally move away from the previous polarizing views of East and West roads only, and allows us to concentrate on a modern and future-proof transport strategy for the county. The world has changed greatly in the last 18 months the last five years or decade, which is when these current plans I'm seeking to remove were formed. I also think the most critical and overriding consideration on all our de deliberations today's council should be the climate emergency. We can only keep saying for so long we believe in something so many times and do nothing about it. Credibility to be lost. I present what I believe is the best way forward for Herefordshire and recommend this report to the council. Thank you, and I look forward to a tough, respectful, and honest debate. Apologies for the stuttering. Uh, thank you, Councillor Harrington. You were well within your time. Well done. Uh, congratulations on that. Uh, is, do you have a seconder? 
You are muted. I can't hear you. You are muted. I'm not Thank saying you. anything yet, but um, yes. Uh, you can be the seconder. Yes. Thank you. Uh, you have three minutes now. Thank you. Uh, we all know that Hereford has serious traffic trouble. Um, and this administration is determined to take action to improve matters. But to do that, we must draw a line under past mistakes. For the last 15 years, at least, all the energy attention and officer time of this council, plus more money than it should have been possible to spend without much closer scrutiny, have been eaten up pursuing road projects, which, as the evidence before you shows, do not deliver the improvements in the city's traffic system that they are intended to do. A massive confidence trick has been played on the public who've now come to believe that it's a bypass that will fix all their problems. Well, it won't. Those of you who've read the detailed reports in this agenda pack will have seen the evidence which confirms that it isn't the road projects that deliver the real congestion relief. It's all the other stuff. And the eagle eyed amongst you will also have read between the lines of the Mott McDonald reports to see that the inconvenient truth of this has been downplayed for years. Over the years, studies have repeatedly shown that 19 in every 20 vehicles in the city's streets is a local person making a very local journey. Isn't it time that local money began to be put into service, into servicing local people, serving lo local people by delivering quickly on cost effective local solutions and using local businesses to do it? That's what the Scrutiny Committee recommended in November. That's what the Cabinet committed to do in December. And that is what Cabinet is now recommending to full council today for you to vote on. As the Cabinet Member for Finance, I find it galling that this administration is once again having to clear up a mess left behind by years of failed leadership. But we have been placed in a catch-22 situation. The South Wide Transport Package and Southern Link Road are at present undeliverable and dead in the water. The Hereford Transport Package and Western Relief Road are unsustainable and unaffordable. Some councillors in opposition will tell you that we've spent this much and so we might as well keep on spending. But colleagues, isn't that the inner voice of a gambler chasing their losses at the roulette wheel? The evidence is before you. Um, it is solid investment in buses and bikes and bridges which will deliver sound solutions for the city not the spinning a spinning wheel or rolling the dice to throw yet more good money after bad. This reserve was created for when the need arose. The need has now arisen. At this point in the debate, I feel it my duty for reasons of financial clarity and value for money to recommend the actions set out in this report. We absolutely must learn the many lessons which these costly and ill-advised initiatives have to teachers but let us draw a line now under them let's release our officers from the purgatory of trying to make the facts fit the story let's turn our faces to the future and move ahead swiftly to provide the whole city of hereford with its long overdue transport system that it's so thank desperate you very much, councillor that is your three minutes plus done thank you uh, can we now have members indicating if they intend to speak. Can you raise a hand? Aha, coming in thick and fast. Thank you. We have three minutes each. And Councillor Simons is first, and then Councillor Fagan. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Chairman. Um, three quick points. Um, Firstly, in light of the fact that funding for the Western Bypass can't be transferred to the Eastern Bypass route, and that uh, two Secretaries of State have previously rejected the Eastern Bypass, uh, uh, Eastern route, Eastern Corridor, uh, I wonder if Councillor Harrington could explain why he believes a third attempt at securing consent for that route would be successful. Uh, secondly, if permission can be secured, what does he believe is the earliest an Eastern bypass or Eastern route, sorry, could in theory be open to traffic, allowing for all the planning, procurement and construction timetables? And the last point, 
was one of the benefits of the Western route would be detrunking of the A49 through the city centre, which would move control of that route from Highways England to Herefordshire Council. Um, since the Eastern option will not uh, move management of that route to the, the, the council, uh, how does Councillor Harrington propose to gain full control over traffic management within the city and implement the measures that we've heard about in terms of you know, electric bus uh, enhancements, walking, cycling, and encouraging people to make uh, uh, more sustainable, uh, environmentally friendly travel choices. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Simons. Uh, Councillor Harrington, do you wish to reply to that? Thank you. All yours. Thank you, Councillor Simons, and I, I beat you on shirts today at the most crucial time. <laughs> I think you've got three questions there. The first question is, why, why do we think that uh, the route now will be supported when it was uh, kicked out before? The, the big difference is that we're not going across the lug flats. That, that is the crucial difference. And I think that was the major reason why the inspector kicked the, kicked the previous schemes out. So the previous scheme was a bypass. It was meant to go from somewhere at Rotherwis, right the way around to the top of the Worcester Road and beyond. This will not. This will go simply across the road and be an access road. And so we believe, therefore, it is going over a sack, a special area of conservation, but so is it in the West as well. And there are considerations about an SSI in the, in, in the East as well. And we'll have to think about that and mitigate that in the work that we're doing. That may require us to do certain things and to provide, uh, you know, wildlife corridors or, or you know, mitigating measures. That, that's the work that we'll have to do to understand that. The second question, I think, was uh, how quickly did, did we think we could start things? It, it, I think that was the question. And I think, once again, this all comes down to a matter of, of focus and resource. So previously, obviously, if you're trying to find a quarter of a billion, it's a bit more difficult to, uh, to scrabble around and come up with a plan. Uh, we think that uh, we can... It, it's, to be fair, the consultants have said both schemes are approximately 10 years away, but they have got no, no real... Um, no real recent assessment of an Eastern scheme, but they have got a very up-to-date assessment of the Western scheme. So I'm much more inclined to believe that they're being honest, especially it's the same consultants themselves who did the first piece of work and that, that the West is definitely 10 years away. The East, I think, is, is potentially much closer for lots of good reasons. Uh, it's a shorter route, it has less landowners, and apart from this issue that we have to address of ecology, um, it could be, I think, achieved you know, with more focus, much more quickly. We have put some extra, well, we're asking for some extra revenue resource in the budget uh, in a week and so's time to enable us to, to get that work done as a matter of urgency and to focus on that alongside the other work that we're doing. So if we need to, if we decide we need to borrow, if we decide we need to make it a toll bridge, uh, which may even offset some of the ecological concerns, all of that's up for play. The, the focus, the, the issue here is focus. We've had 10, 12 years of planning to get us to a stage on the Western route where we're another 10 years away. That is a quarter of a century of wasted opportunity. It is really unconscionable. We're gonna be much more focused and we're gonna have other solutions. You don't just have one solution for a quarter of a century. You come up with different plans. You come up with getting people that travel less than, um, a city like Hereford where 50% of people travel less than 1.2 you get them involved, you get them doing different things while you look at the bridge. I think the third question, I've lost the track now because I was waffling. What was the third question again, Councillor? Sorry. Chairman, can I just interrupt very quickly? Uh, Councillor Graham Andrews is in the waiting room. If we could just admit him in and do a quick check in here and be seen, please. Yes, okay, we'll do that now. Sorry, Councillor Harrington. Give you and Councillor Simon's pause for thought. Uh, can we have... Uh, you in front of us, please. I can't hear or see anyone at the moment. Can we have can we have sight and and sound, please? I'm I'm back, Chairman. Thank you very much. Thank you. We can see and hear you. I presume you can see and hear us as well. I can. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Uh uh, yes, so the, um, well, perhaps if I could just, on the second point, Councillor Harrington, you, 
you said less than 10 years. I wonder if you could be any more specific than that. But the, the third point I was making was about uh, not being able to detrunk the A49. And without that, we then haven't got control to deliver all the ambitions we have for um, uh, more sustainable travel choices in the city. OK. And Sam, make it brief, please. Yeah, yes, th thank you, Councillor Simons. I should have remembered that. Um, there's, there's two issues there. First of all, there is no impediment to us making those changes. Highways England is uh, required by government to collaborate fully with the local authority. They have given us those assurances. That is not an issue. That is a misnomer. That is a myth. Secondly, I don't necessarily want to inherit a bridge that is coming towards the end of its life. And it'll still, it'll still go on for many more years, but its maintenance will be upped in requirement. I don't necessarily want a local authority to take on a huge asset like that without really good thought. So I don't feel it's a necessity at the moment. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Fagan, please. You have three minutes. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, w while I'm obviously trying very hard to keep an open mind about this decision. Um, I note that today th there's a report that's just come out that was commissioned by the UK Treasury, which says that to detach nature from economic reasoning is to imply we consider ourselves to be external to nature. The fault is not in economics, it lies in the way we have chosen to practice it. Transformative change is possible, we and our descendants deserve nothing less. And as a resident of South Herefordshire and a council taxpayer, I'm very conscious and concerned about the issues of congestion around Hereford. And I'm also conscious of the difficult financial situation we find ourselves in. I'm a frugal person and at times I too have struggled to pay my council tax. I count every penny and I hate waste. If there was a way of avoiding the waste that had been created by this situation, I would certainly be willing to hear about it. Um, I feel that we need to balance our economy with ecology. I remain open to be convinced that these, these schemes, these two road schemes actually do keep that balance in check. Personally, I'm furious at how money that could have been spent on upkeeping our local road network and flood resilience was diverted to these road projects. I think that the projects were badly project managed, they represented bad value for money, and they posed ecological devastation for ancient woodland, the Y Valley Special Area of Conservation and the Triple SI. Um, I would like to find out how there is a way of achieving a sustainable link between the A465 Abergavenny to Hereford A49. And I'm conscious that communities under the B4348, including, including Lanwarn, Wormelow and Much Dew Church are under barrage from HGVs that frequent these roads. And I would certainly welcome safety arrangements to the Locks Garage Junction as a priority. I feel that we've committed ourselves to a program of decarbonization and because that's sci what science is telling us we must do. We can't keep wringing our hands and about the calamity that's befallen us and do nothing about it. Uh, my questions today are, will stopping any further spend on these road projects means that mean that the value of the money spent today by today has all been wasted? And could we just put these road projects on hold while we introduce measures that will improve travel, travel options for the city residents more quickly and then see if the road projects are still needed? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fagan. That was well in time. Uh, Councillor Harrington, do you want a quick reply or explanation or elucidation? Uh, yes, I would. Chairman, what is my, do I, am I limited by my reply by time? Well, I would rather you were kept within three minutes, please. Yes, very much so. Because many other people want to speak, so please. Um, Indeed, please. I, was, I was just asking a specific question, fair enough. Um, uh, thank you, Councillor Fagan, for those questions, and they're very good questions. I think there's a few things to, to consider here. We, we do live in a very different world. We, we live in a world that's been changed just in the last 18 months, let alone the last few years. We are not traveling in the same way. The, the numbers of, of vehicles on roads are decreasing. That said, there are people in your ward who need access to the city by vehicles. And I think the quicker and better way to do that would be to upgrade existing roads along the lines of suggestions by Councillor Matthews and others. 
and Councillor Kenyon, where we look at, you know, improving the infrastructure and upgrading existing roads, perhaps at the back of Tram Inn, and then look at a connection point there, look at, uh, look at Bridge Solars and what we could do there, look at the top of Roman Road, where there's only one lane over the bridge by the South Herefordshire garages when there should be two. We can, we can make significantly quicker, I think, rather than uh, hold two projects at the moment which don't serve that purpose. The money hasn't been entirely lost, no, because the active travel measure work that was done, which was a minor part, but still considerable, is useful. And also the modeling that was done is useful and usable to us. But uh, we, we can't leave the projects there without, without moving on them because that would just, it comes back to the same issue of being required to decapitalize. Thank you. One minute, 20 seconds, just for your information. Uh, Councillor Durkin. No, Chairman, I've lowered my hand. Thank you. Oh, you've lowered your hand. Sorry, I missed that. Uh, then we have Councillor Gandhi. My hand, Chairman. Sorry, you've lowered your hand too. My hand. Thank you. Uh, we've got time, I don't know what that is quite. Uh, Councillor Kenyon and then Councillor Wilding. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I was just wondering if it was a, a good time to move the amendment, if um, if you're in agreement. Uh, not yet. I don't. I think we've got other people to speak first. Sorry about that. We'll have your chance later on. Um, in which case, we'll go to Councillor Wilding. Councillor Wilding. Are you there, Councillor Wilding? Yeah, I was just having trouble unmuting. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, so I'm going to have a, a question for Councillor Harrington at the end of uh, what I'm just going to say here. I'm just wondering, he mentioned earlier on induced demand. And um, I've been reading up quite a bit about induced re demand recently. And so I guess my question is, going to get round to um, whether induced demand sort of shows us that uh, no matter what we think about the roads for or against, they don't actually work and they won't actually work to remove the congestion in um, the city centre. Um, I was looking at a UK government study on induced demand uh, published in 2018, which uh, they started off by saying it wasn't a problem. Uh, but then uh, they admitted that uh, over 10 years, a road would attract enough traffic to take it to full capacity. And that uh, roads that initially benefited from the, the traffic moving to it also suffered from in induced demand and filled up again as well. So uh, what happens is you achieve a temporary reduction in congestion uh, while you encourage more traffic onto the roads generally. And I guess that's the main point because here we are, we've all declared a climate and ecological emergency. So um, how can we be trying to put something through that actually increases traffic it's not about, it's not just about whether we reduce a little bit here or reduce a little bit there if we increase the overall traffic uh, then we're going to be doing things to pollution to people's health for years to come so building more road roads encouraging more traffic uh, it's it's very simple. Just cut down the traffic and you'll achieve the reductions you require much cheaper. Uh, so we declared and proudly declared a climate and ecological emergency. So is it not time that we actually put our money where our mouth is and, and back measures that will actually help congestion, traffic, health, and help us to combat climate and ecological emergency. Thanks. Uh, thank, thank you, Councillor. Uh, we now go to Councillor Davis, Gemma Davis. You have your statutory three minutes. Okay, thank you, Chair. 
I stand here not as a cabinet member, but as a Southside Ward councillor. And in my election commitments, I promise to stand for honesty, accountability and transparency. I promise that the decisions I make will be based on sound facts and evidence. And that's what I'm doing today. People have talked about the bypass in Herefordshire since I can remember. All of us being promised that it was secure to solving the traffic issues and nothing else being considered. It may well have been that 10 years ago, a bypass might have been the go to but the evidence I have read says that it is not now. We live in a different world, one that is being destroyed by greenhouse gases and overpopulation. We need to think differently and we need to look at how to prevent the root cause, the simple one being that too many of us are using a car for short journeys. My disabled mother who lives in my city ward drives less than a mile into town every day to go to her work, not because she wants to, but because they stopped the bus route that she used to get. When I was a child, I got a happy hopper bus into town. Now children have to be taken in by car because they don't have the bus route and because our cycling and walking infrastructure is not fit for purpose. As South Saxon Gate councillor, I'm committed to easing the traffic for my residents. It's why I have raised in every meeting the need to move at pace with solutions for Southside. The elements of the Southwide Transport Package other than the Southern Link Road, remain in the administration's plans and were specifically mentioned in both the scrutiny and cabinet reports. The scrutiny and cabinet reports did not say cancel the Southwide Transport Package and do nothing else. They said cancel this specific road and move at pace with the alternatives. I do not doubt that every single person in this room loves Herefordshire. But part of that love for Herefordshire, part of that reason why people move here, is due to the beauty of the Herefordshire countryside. Both the SLR and the bypass will do untold damage to the landscapes that we hold in our hearts. This cannot be ignored. The bypass has become the Brexit of Herefordshire. It's created divisions amongst friends and families, all convinced that their view is the correct one. All of us must take a responsibility for maintaining and sometimes fueling that division. This includes social media, news outlets, councillors and lobbying groups. Once this decision is made, we must all work together to implement the changes we need to do to get Herefordshire moving. No more arguments, no more clickbait, no more pitching one side against each other. The last 12 months have shown the extraordinary things we can do when we come together. This is our opportunity to do this starting from today. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor. We now have Councillor Matthews, and then followed by Councillor Bowes and Councillor Polly Andrews. Councillor Matthews? Yeah, just thank with this mute. Um, Chairman, first of all, I'd like to clarify one thing. Speaking on this now doesn't have anything to do with my, when I address the amendment. I only want to ask a question of the cabinet member for interest. Uh, yes, you may do that. Yeah. Um, Councillor Harrington, you quite rightly said, first of all, I'd like to thank you for all your hard work on this complicated issue. But secondly, you quite rightly said, and I'm pleased to welcome it, that you're considering upgrading and improvements to the Bridge Solis Road and other links in the area. And you've quite clearly said, and you've told me before, and you've said publicly today that you're looking to um, come around arrange some sort of connection between the A465 and the, um, the 49 in one way, some shape or form. Um, can you confirm that that is correct, please? Uh, thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Harrington, would you be so kind as to elucidate? Yes, thank you, Councillor Matthews, and thank you for your, your, your work uh, as well on, on the issues of transport and your, 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 your battles uh, in the past to try and bring a sensible strategy to the county. I can confirm that. Um, I'm prepared to commit to uh, work immediately to look at what I call the other options, uh, the, the, the upgrading of existing infrastructure that we can look at to make the existing network work better. And, uh, and that will include all the elements you've just mentioned. And I give you my commitment in the room on that. I know it's important to you and to your residents um, and the residents that represented in the South Y. Thank you, Councillor Harrington. That was very clear. Chairman, Chairman. sorry, can I interrupt? Um, yeah. Councillor Ianson is back in the waiting room. If we could please admit her. Right. Will you admit Councillor Ianson, please? 
and also Chairman Councillor Norman um, I, has had her hand up uh, for a short time. If, if you could go to her. Yes, I was, she's on my list. Um, Councillor Anson, can we have you please? Can we see you and hear you? Councillor Ayanson. Um, also, Chairman Councillor Johnson um, is, is being resubmitted as well as he lost connection. Yes. Right. Can we have them all in a bunch, do you think, please? I'm, uh, I'm so sorry. I think we, we'd had a power cut. <laughs> Right, but you're back. I can see you, see you and hear you now. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next one. Who's the other ones who we need to readmit? Uh, Councillor Johnston. Councillor Johnson. Can we see you, please? And hear I you. can see. I can see and hear you, Chairman. I can see and hear you too. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Then can we come to now, Councillor Bose, Councillor Andrews, and Councillor Norman in that order, please. Thank you, Chair. Everyone in this room and across Herefordshire acknowledges Hereford's transport issues. What we don't agree is on how to solve them. I represent Belmont Rural and I would argue the residents in Belmont are amongst those most affected by traffic congestion. Residents face a daily commute to work, school or appointments, spending a countless amount of time stuck in traffic on the Belmont Road or as the traffic lights. So it was interesting to me that when Belmont Rural Parish Council called an extraordinary meeting to discuss the bypass, residents overwhelmingly said a bypass would not ease congestion and would not solve the traffic problems. This is coming from the very residents who spend a large part of their daily life stuck in that traffic. I continue to hold an open mind and like the residents of Belmont, I look forward to being convinced by today's arguments that a bypass is a solution to the problem. Before a bypass is built, thousands of new homes would be built on the outskirts of Belmont. These homes would be built before a bypass. The traffic from these homes will be going down the Belmont Road, Haywood Lane and Ross Road, making journeys even longer and adding more and more pollution. Belmont has no pollution issues, yet the Mott McDonald peer assessment of the Harryford Transport Package stated increased noises predicted along the bypass route, increased greenhouse and gas emissions, negative landscape. So are some of the councillors really saying, if it isn't in my ward, then that is acceptable to them? Because it isn't acceptable to me. We don't want to move the problem from ward to ward. We want to tackle it. The bypass is not a bypass. It is an access road through a housing estate. What we need is a second river crossing to allow traffic from the northeast of the city to move around. A city link road by the station in Hereford was built by the previous administration. It cost 34 million pounds. Has the city link road helped with congestion or is there now more traffic than ever stuck on Edgar Street? I understand this was the most expensive road in the country mile for mile. Was it value for money? The council's General Scrutiny Committee reviewed the findings of these traffic consultants and the committee recommended that the executive abandon the Western Bypass and reject other major infrastructure schemes barring only the Eastern River Crossing option and concentrate on a series of recommendations tackling the emergency declared by the council and conservative government, address the issue of congestion and help children get to school, encourage cycling, walking and help with our obesity. No matter what clickbait headlines you read on some social media sites, the previous administration had 10 years to get these roads progressed and finalised. They couldn't provide a full business case and the procurement process on the SLR failed. Why was that the case? If it doesn't stack up, why keep chucking money at it? They didn't deliver on what they promised. So let's stop talking and start delivering. Start delivering for our residents, not our current residents, but also the generations of residents to come. The time is for action and the time is now. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Polly Andrews and Councillor Norman and Councillor Summers. So, uh, Councillor Polly Andrews, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I would simply, simply like to ask, 
if the uh, bypass is uh, abandoned, the A49 will, of course, continue to be a major trunk road through Hereford. And I would like to then know what, um, in these circumstances, what measures would be taken to, to um, improve the air quality from the Edgar Street roundabout up to the starting gate roundabout, which goes through my ward. The, um, there are houses on both sides of Edgar Street and a 400 plus primary school in Homer Road. So I would simply like to know what, what will be done about improving the air quality. Thank you, Councillor Andrews. Councillor Harrington, do you want to have a, a quick response or will you want to put a written response in? Councillor Harrington? Yes, yeah, I'd like to respond to, uh, to, to Councillor Andrews, yes. Fine. Uh, thank, thank you, Councillor Andrews. Um, it, it, it's interesting that the, the perception that we're a major strategic road is true, but, 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 but not the volume, you know. We, the, the latest figures show that only 7% of the traffic that comes through Hereford is trying to transit, is trying to get through Hereford. Um, the rest of it is local traffic. And, and of that percentage of 7%, an even smaller amount is, is HGVs. But the point you raise is valid. I'm not denigrating that. What I'm saying is that if we reduce the congestion in Hereford by the other measures, by providing people with buses, cycle routes, and another bridge crossing, congestion will go down and we will get a reduction in congestion on those, on those routes. That is the general principle. I'll also, I'm also will be taking forward looking at removal of traffic lights, which I think will, will provide even further reduction in, in, in congestion throughout the city. But I, I'm acutely conscious of those issues and I will keep them in mind for your residents. Thank, thank you very much indeed, uh, Councillor Harrington. We now come to Councillor Norman, followed by Councillor Summers and Gandhi. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I've been involved in this debate for a very long time, decades literally, and have seen proposals for an eastern bypass and a western bypass. Alongside these have been proposals for active travel, better public transport, and all the measures which we'd like to be introducing. They've been around. Some very positive programmes have been around for a very long time. And many of us have been saying that we should try those first, including the government, who has at times said, different governments have said, there will be no funding until it's been clearly shown that these measures don't work and that a road is the only alternative. Those measures have simply never been put into practice. And I think, as many people have said already, what the people of Hereford want, and indeed people coming in from outside, is a pleasant city that they can travel through with, without difficulties and enjoy in the many ways which we'd like to see that happen. I don't think most people care how it happens. And I think the fact that we have never ever put into practice the, the very positive measures, active travel and all the rest that we, we know can make a difference really does uh, call into question why these other proposals have been put on the table. Uh, so expensive and you know very doubtful whether they do the, the trick. So we have a, a, an increasing concern these days. We have the problem <coughs> issues of climate change which have been getting worse over years and years and years but are now really coming to a head and we know there is good practice around we have we can look at so many other cities not just in this country but particularly in other countries where good practice alternatives to roads have been put in place and could be seen to work really effectively and make cities lovely places to live and to enjoy and to want to come to that's the thing at the moment, it's, it's, it's a distraction. People don't want to come to Hereford because of the difficulties. Let's make it a place that people will positively enjoy coming to. Let's try the alternative first, and then I'm open to discussion and arguments about looking at other ways of dealing with the problem if they don't work. But we've never given it a try, and we really must do that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Norman. Uh, we come to Councillor Summers, followed by Councillor Gandhi, Hewitt and Lester. Thank you, Chair. There will be a question after my bit of a speech here. Um, I've been cycling to from Homeleach to Hereford back in the 60s. Didn't like it, a lot of hills, and, uh, but it was only five miles, so it wasn't too bad for a young guy. Um, uh, now you can't cycle to, to Hereford from Homeleach, from Dinder, or from anywhere else. It's too dangerous. 
There's been a few people killed that I know of. Um, for the past few years, I've been pushing for a cycle path from home Lacey through to the A49. Uh, it's perfectly possible, a few, few problems in the way. And so far we've got the cycleway through um, to pass the co-op and to up to St. Martin's, and we've got some in in the in the, um, on the Rotherwish Road. I my biggest concern with the Southwide Transport Package, and this is for, is that uh, I don't want to lose the work I've done on getting the, the rest of the site the traffic calming connecting cycleways through to to Lower Bullingham. Can the cabinet member assure me that uh, that's still open? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Harrington, quick response? Yes, I can. Thank you, Chairman. And thank you, Councillor Summers. Yes, I can assure you that's still a focus and actually still in programme. And we hope to be, you know, looking, for, looking to deliver that within, you know, the next year or so. Uh, the Home Lacey scheme needs to be redrawn because uh, guidance that's come out from government really doesn't want us to have shared spaces, uh, sh shared paths anymore with walking and cycling along the side. So there's an element of redesign going through uh, at the moment. Uh, the, the other thing that you mentioned in relation to the connection to Home Lacey, that was part of some plans that weren't taken forward by the previous administration uh, when the Greenway was built. And we, we can focus on those and we will do. I can give you that assurance. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Gandhi, you do want to speak this time? Yes, please, Chairman. Um, excuse my throat. Um, Cancelling the bypass will mean that other initiatives to reduce traffic in the city will be needed, and many are mentioned in the report. I wish to concentrate on my own ward with regards to this, because this is not just about Hereford and the surrounding area. It's also about the two-fifths of the population who live in the rural areas. In my ward of 62 square miles and approximately 50 people to the square mile, I've no idea of road mileage, but it must be considerable. Over 40% travel more than 15 miles to work and only 2% use public transport. And why only 2%? There is only one bus per week to Hereford for some, and it's a one and a half hour journey. Then you have two and a half hours in Hereford before returning home a total of three hours traveling and a whole day taken up. Of those that do, they continue to complain about the time it takes, as in order to make the route as viable as possible, the bus has to take several diversions to pick up the maximum number of passengers, and yet it still needs to be heavily subsidized. If you only want to venture to Lempster, then you have the luxury of a further two buses per week, which take over an hour each way, with again, many diversions. Some of these subsidies are paid for by parish councils, as Herefordshire Council apparently cannot afford to support them. However, public transport is only available to about a quarter of my residents, and the rest have no access at all. You're looking at demand-responsive public transport as a potential solution in rural areas, and the report quotes Lincolnshire Call Connect. I've looked at this service and note that each bus travels no more than a 12-mile radius. The website's unclear as to whether if just one person is traveling, would it be acceptable? It certainly would not be economic and it would not reduce vehicle journeys. You talk about workplace parking charges, higher city car parking charges. In both these proposals, you are penalizing us in the rural areas. The consultant document states that the problems of demand management will have to have on those on the rural areas and without enormous subsidies or very high fares, I cannot see how DRT can address these. Your suggestion for reducing the number of cars in the city smacks of wanting those in the rural areas to stay away and I suspect they will. In 2004, the government launched a Choose How You Move scheme, which was piloted by Worcestershire and others. 4.4 million was allocated to Worcestershire. This money was to be spent on initiatives across the county over a five year period to get people out of their car. It changed little in the short time, nothing in the longer term. And the only reminder of that scheme and the money spent are the umbrellas given out during the campaign, one of which is still in my car. What it did show was that changing people's hearts and minds and their love of their car is a monumental task. Residents of wards like Mortimer with less than one bus a day and a very sparse population will have to use their car. 
Thank you, Councillor Gandhi. So you've had your three minutes plus. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Harrington, do you want to have a quick reply? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Gandhi knows that I'm not going to leave her residence stranded because I, I fear her wrath for a start. I, I fully appreciate that we must provide a better bus service and we must put money into a better bus service. We used to have a better bus service, Councillor, probably while you were still in charge of, of, of Wire Forest or Witchhaven. Really, she won't. We used to have a much, much better, much more comprehensive and much more economically viable bus service. We will put money back into a bus service to make sure that residents in your wards are able to travel by bus in a much more productive and useful way to be able to go to work and to be able to uh, use it to go to, to go and uh, shop or to, to go and uh, enjoy leisure. The critical thing is that, as I've said before, because of our rurality, some people will have to use their cars and you're dead right. And by me reducing traffic in the city, I fail to see how that means that I'm penalizing people who want to come in from further afield. I'm trying to do the opposite. I'm trying to say to the people in Hereford City, you don't need to travel 1.2 miles every day by car to go to work or to school or to shop. You could do that on a bus or you could walk or cycle if it was a safe route. So you stay to, you, know, you change your way, we'll help you to do that. And that allows people who have to use their cars to come in from further out to use their cars. But beyond that, I actually think that people further out should be given the opportunity to travel better. And, my, and it all comes down to the money and where your focus is. And if you're prepared to throw a quarter of a billion at a road that's only going to be arriving in 10 years, well, I can, I can focus that on making sure we've got a really good bus system now. And that, and that and, and absolutely will be my intention. And in relation to specifics, the stuff identified by the consultants, is, is not gospel. All of that is, is for debate and for, for proper consideration as quickly as possible. So any feedback from yourself or residents will be taken into account. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, we've got now, we do, we have come to half past three and would you like a break now or do you want to finish this debate? There are about four or five speakers still to come. You might all be desperate for a break. Would you indicate to me how desperate you are? Those for a break, will you put your hands up? Yeah. Otherwise, we'll, we'll carry on, we'll finish these questions and then we'll go to the amendment. You've got 10 speakers, Chairman. I think as well. I've only got... It's um, a, a long time, Chairman. Because we, we can go on forever otherwise. Um, I think we'll have a break. Right. We'll have a uh, quarter of an hour, 20 minutes, 20, well, shall we come back in... Quarter an hour's time, please. I hope that will uh, satisfy you. Cup of tea, cup of coffee. And um, we're back live now, Chairman. Thank you very much, Jen. Uh, uh, all members, we do have to go through the, can you hear me, can you see me process again, I'm afraid. Sorry about that. I can start again. Councillor Graham Andrews. Good afternoon, Chair. Yes, I can see and hear you. Thank you. I can see and hear you. Thank you. Councillor Paul Andrews. Hello, Chair. Again, yes, I can see and hear you clearly. Thank you. I can see and hear you too. Councillor Polly Andrews. Yes, I can hear and see you, Chairman. I can see and hear you too. Thank you. Councillor Jenny Bartlett. Yes, Chairman, I can hear and see you. I can hear and see you too. Councillor Chris Bartram. I can hear and see you, Mr Chairman. I can hear and see you too. Thank you. Councillor Christy Bilderson. I can see and hear you, Chair. Thank you very much. I can see and hear you too. Councillor Dave Bilter. I can hear and see you, Chair. I can see and hear you too. Councillor Tracy Bowes. I can see and hear you, Chair. Thank you. I can see and hear you too. Councillor Ellie Charles. I can see and hear you, Chair. Thank you. I can see and hear you too. Councillor Pauline Crockett. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I can see and hear you. 
Thank you. I can see and hear you too. Councillor Gemma Davis. Yes, Jim, I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you too. Thank you. Councillor Barry Durkin. I can hear you, Joe. My um, video is sometimes flaky, so I, I may drop out. I can hear you and see you at the moment. Anyway, thank, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Councillor Tony Fagan. I can see and hear you, Chair. I can see and hear you too. Thank you. Councillor Elizabeth Foxton. Thank you, Chair. I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you too. Councillor Carol Gandhi. I can see and hear you, Chairman. I can see and hear you too. Councillor Kima Guthrie. <coughs> I can see it. Yeah, I can see and hear you, Chairman. I can see and hear you too, thank you. Mm -hmm. Councillor John Hardwick. Uh, yes, Chairman, I can see and hear you, thank you. you <clears throat> Councillor John Harrington. Yes, Chairman, I can see and hear you, thank you. I can see and hear you too, thank you. <laughs> <coughs> Councillor Liz Harvey. Yes, Chair, I can uh, see and hear you. I can see and hear you too, thank you. Councillor Jenny Ewing. Yeah. Yes, I can see and hear you, Chair. Thank you, I can see and hear you too. Councillor Cathay? Yeah, thank you, Chair, I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you as well. Councillor David Hitchener? Yes, I can hear and see you, Chairman, thank you. Thank you, I can see and hear you too. Councillor Philip Howells? Thank you, Chairman, yes, I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you too. Councillor Helen Ionson? Thank you, Chair, I can see and hear you at the moment, thank you. Thank you, I can see and hear you too. Councillor Terry James? Uh, Chairman, I can see and hear you. I can't see you, but I can hear no, you. I'm moving at the moment, so <laughs> slightly. So, yes, I, I, I'll put that right in a moment. Okay, thank you. I can at least hear you. That's, that's the one essential. Councillor Peter Gilman. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you too. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Tony Johnson. I can see and hear you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, I can see and hear you too. Councillor Graham Jones. I can see and hear you, Mr Chairman. Thank you, I can see and hear you too. Councillor Mike Jones. Thank you, Chairman, I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you too. Councillor Jim Kenyon. I have both sound and vision, Chairman. Thank you, I can see and hear you too. Councillor Jonathan Lester. Thank you, Chairman, I can see and hear you. Yes, I can see <laughs> Too. Councillor Trish Marsh. Thank you, Chair. I can hear and see you. Thank you. I can hear and see you as well. Councillor Bob Matthews. Yeah, can you hear and see you, Chairman? Yes, I can see and hear you. Thank you. Councillor Mark Milmore. Thank you, Chairman. I can see and hear you. Yes, I can see and hear you too. Councillor Jeremy Milne. Thank you, Chair. I can see and hear you too. Thank you. I can see and hear you as well. Councillor Felicity Norman. Uh, yes, thank you. I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you too. Councillor Roger Phillips. Yes, Chairman, I can see and hear you. I, I can not, ah, I can see and hear you now too, thank you. Councillor Tim Price. Councillor Tim Price. Uh, is Councillor Price around? Or can you, anyone have seen or heard him? I can Anybody see and hear you, Chairman. I can see and hear you now, thank you. Councillor Paul Rome. Uh, thank you, see and hear you, Chair. I can see and hear you too, thank you. Councillor Alan Seldon. Still sound and vision, Chairman, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I can see and hear you too. Councillor Nigel Shaw. Thank you, Chair. I can hear and see you. I can see and hear you too, thank you. Councillor Louis Stark. I can hear and see you, Chair, thanks. Thank you. I can see and hear you too. Councillor John Stone. Thank you, Chairman. I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you too. Councillor David Summers. Hi, Chair. I can see you and hear you. Thank you, I can see and hear you too. Councillor Alyssa Swinglehurst. Thank you, Chair, I can hear and see you. Good, I can see and hear you as well. Councillor Paul Simons. Yeah, all clear here, thank you, Chair. <laughs> thank you, I can see and hear you. Uh, Councillor Kevin Tillett. Thank you, Chair, I can see and hear you. Thank you, I can see and hear you too. Councillor Diana Toynbee. Thank you, Chair, I can see and hear you. I can see and hear you too. Councillor Anish Tyler. Thank you, Chair. I can see and hear you too. I can see and hear you as well. Thank you. Councillor Yolandi Watson. Uh, good afternoon, Chair. Yes, I can hear you and see you. Thank you. I can see and hear you too. Councillor William Wilding. Thanks, Chair. I can see and hear. Thank you. I can see and hear you too. Uh, I think that's, that's everybody, isn't it? Uh, which is a great relief. Right, we will resume our 
Hereford Control School strategy. Uh, councillors' comments. I have now Councillor Hewitt, Lester, Howells, Milmore, Kitchener, and I've got Councillor Ianson, Roan, Tillett, Chance, and Swinglehurst. I'm going to call today then. I think everyone's had a very good go, and almost everyone that wants to speak, I think, will have spoken. So please remember you're, you only have three minutes, and if you do it in less, you'll be commended for it. <laughs> um, just, ah, there we are. Um, uh, Councillor Hewitt, followed by Councillor Lester and Howells. Councillor Hewitt. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon. Um, yeah, as a member of General Scrutiny, um, um, I was one of the people that um, tabled the, um, the uh, what we're considering here today in full council. And um, so, what, you know, I have yet to hear what um, the amendments have been to, um, in order to keep an open mind and consider whether there are any other solutions. But the road solutions have always appeared to me and judging by the evidence from the two reviews, like a sledgehammer to cra crack a nut with the eye-watering sums of money that have already been spent and we still have congestion problems. My uh, view at present <coughs> is our reduced pandemic and climate budget demands something quick and affordable, a levelling up of initiatives to deliver health outcomes for people, planet and critters, and evidence suggests that you get a £27 return for every £1 spent on health initiatives. So, you know, the modal shift seems to me a really good idea. But I'd like to ask to a couple of questions to um, the member for transport and planning, um, Councillor Harrington, from residents in my ward. There's a perception that opportunities for youth employment in Herefordshire will be poorly impacted if we don't deliver the road schemes? That's one question. And I'd like some evidence in relation to that piece. And then I'd also like him to, would he consider for rural residents postcode discretion on car parking? Because I think that that would be a very good acknowledgement of the difficulties that rural people might experience in traveling in to access the city. And the last thing I'd like him to think about, please, is the fact that some areas, the Wild West, where I am, got left out of the local transport plan in a core strategy, which has made delivery of public bus services incredibly difficult. So those are three questions that I'd like him to address, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Harrington, you have two minutes to address those three questions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Hewitt. Um, I don't think there's any evidence that a bypass or any other attempt to tackle congestion um, is it, favourable over another in, in, in providing job opportunities. I, I'm not quite sure how they're linked anyway. Um, neither is housing linked to a bypass against any other way of uh, accessing land or reducing congestion. So I don't think that stands up. Uh, post coast discretion, that's a, that's a good point. If we were to take forward some element of demand management, that as being something that we could look at, absolutely. Buses, I, I do think it's um, remiss of us to have missed out that part of the of the Golden Valley. I think it's partly because the provider there was such a reliable and strong provider. But, you know, as we all know, things change and have changed. So I will make sure that that's rectified. Thank you. Uh, now we come to Councillor Lester, followed by Councillor Howells, and then no more. Thank you, Chair. Um, when the administration uh, commissioned the report, the review, I thought it was going to be a, a you know unnecessary expense. However, it did give the opportunity to review the bypass and the active travel measures. Having seen the review, what did it conclude? It concluded that uh, to pursue a bypass was sound, and Hereford has congestion. Well, you know it's confirmed what we already knew. If we turn to the report on page 167, it says that 27% of the traffic is trying to get in, 25% of the traffic is trying to get out, 7% of the traffic is trying to get through. Therefore, 59%, the overwhelming majority of traffic is either trying to get in, out or through the city. No wonder there's congestion. Uh, we look at page 170, 
46,000 vehicle movements on a daily basis for over a decade. So there's no surprise there about the congestion. But if we go to the report at page uh, 238, when it's talking about creating a resilient transport system and a reliable and a, a efficient movement of people, it says the package, which includes the Western bypass, is forecast to provide the greatest congestion relief and greatest resilience for transport network. Now, given the findings of the report, why wouldn't you want to support a, a package that has the Western bypass? The debate seems to focus on the difference between a bypass and it's sort of always bypass versus roads, or bypass versus cycling, or bypass versus buses. The truth is, the proposals that we advocate of building a bypass are in conjunction with the active travel measures. They complement each other. You can't have the active travel measures unless you have the bypass itself to make room for all of this. The idea about induced demand, I just think is a red herring because simply there's going to be more traffic anyway because of the growth. Therefore, if you don't provide the infrastructure for the future, you are blighting Hereford and Herefordians for generations to come. We were on track for delivering large projects. We were going to be given the money because it was going to deliver the housing. Hereford and Herefordshire needs to grow properly and it needs the infrastructure. We need the active travel measures as well, but we need them hand in hand with a 21st century infrastructure that will make sure that this county thrives absolutely certain that the answers are there before you in the report and I would ask members to look at what the report actually says about ensuring that we have the most resilient uh, transport system that will improve the economic fortunes of this county and its citizens. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well in time. By two seconds. Very neat. Uh, Councillor Howells, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thanks for the clarification we're getting on uh, a range of questions on the pros and cons of the different options. It's helping to make a lot of clarification. And I, I quite realise that the timescales involved, uh, which are quite long, there may be different planning regulations in place when we, whatever option we decide to um, agree with today or not. And I know what Councillor Harrison said a couple of minutes ago about no impact on housing, but I'm not sure I understand accept that. Uh, so I think there are some relevant questions to ask and certainly I'd like particular reassurances on some housing issues. So there are three questions. First of all, how will no bypass and the alternatives that have been recommended instead impact on the five-year housing land supply? Uh, this issue isn't covered at all in the latest position statement of 1st of April last year, published in September. We know that the housing supply is already dangerously low and I am concerned, and I know the residents where I live in Debris are, that um, how could we defend core strategy and neighbor development plans that are currently in place if whatever option we take has a different impact on the five-year housing supply? So I'd like an answer on that. Secondly, uh, and in particular, um, what if any impact on Lebri and Ross especially um, on whatever housing requirement we may be allocated to provide in the core strategy. Uh, we both have the most attractive transport access infrastructure links. We're the, the two market towns that are most under pressure from developers already and like to face increasing pressure for alternative sites that may not be without the bypass. Um, for example, because the bypass, and I've seen this in other towns, may not open up hinterland for possible alternative sites which would therefore be to the detriment to Ross and Lebri uh, and increased housing pressure. And, and as a byproduct benefit, maybe not benefit more land that could be accessible at lower cost for affordable housing. And that sites could come forward by developers who find it attractive to develop. Uh, and that is my third question on affordable housing. How will having no pass, no bypass, and it may not have an impact, but I'd like to know, impact on diverting building priorities to have more of the affordable houses that we need for Hereford, and which has recently been declared um, as an affordable housing target by the council. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Harrington, you've got three questions there. 
I do. Uh, can I just check with the monitoring officer, if you don't mind, uh, Chairman? Am I entitled to respond to other members' uh, statements? Or do I wait to the end to do that? Um, or do I not at all? The statements, you only get, you get the chance to reply to questions. Okay, so, that's fair enough. It was very well worded. Then then the end, you have your... Yeah. Uh, and, understood, understood. Very well worded by Councillor Lester. Um, Councillor Howells, um, I think that actually relying on a bypass will jeopardise our housing supply the most. We, 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 the deliverability of that project is seriously in doubt in my consideration. It always was. The inspector in 2015, when she agreed the uh, 2015 core strategy, said that she would not consider the bypass she would happy to have it in the in, in the in the in the core strategy, but she was not making her decision based on the bypass because she did not believe it was deliverable, and she thought it was risky to base allocations on that. So, in actual fact, bringing in other measures more quickly to reduce congestion, asking developers just to, to factor in access as they would any other any other way, has a much much greater chance of keeping us on track. As it happens, we've just been told that the cap has been relieved on our housing stock because we delivered more housing last year than at the other point since uh, about 2001. So, so my, my point is we're not going to suddenly get a flood. This is a myth that's been passed around. We're not suddenly going to get a flood of housing going elsewhere. The bypass, the, the allocations can be built right now as long as they, other conditions are met in terms of flooding and you know access. Um, in relation to affordable housing, we're doing that ourselves to a large extent, but I don't see why it would impact anyway on the allocation sites and the and the, and the and the proportionment of, of affordable housing within that. So that's that's my view on that one. Backed up by Q. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, now we have uh, Councillor Milmore, Swinglehurst, James Shaw, and Hitchener. We are coming towards the end. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd just like to um, uh, make some observations. I, I'm not particularly impressed with um, some of the subjective um, reasoning behind the, the administration's um, comments today. Um, I'd like to uh, mention uh, a bit of a story that I've had with, you know, as you know, I'm in the IT industry and I've been trying to get um, uh, IT companies to relocate to Hereford. I managed to get one small um, startup to relocate to Hereford, but uh, I've worked for many years in the IT industry and I have some connections with venture capitalists who put millions into IT startups. And I was talking last year to one of uh, these chaps um, singing the praises of Hereford uh, as a place for uh, startups for IT. And um, and this chap said, well, he said, why should I put millions of pounds into Hereford when your own administration doesn't really think that doing serious uh, infrastructure upgrades into Hereford is viable? Um, and I felt a bit, bit, bit embarrassed about it, um, that I think that uh, the administration is uh, rather prevaricating, not making a good um, um, decisions. I think that um, it's like rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. Um, uh, doing some electric buses and bicycles is not really going to cut it if you're trying to attract uh, businesses from outside of Hereford to come into Hereford um, to, to give us the sort of high paid jobs that are going to get our young people in the next generation to live and work in Hereford. Um, so what is it that this administration is going to do to change the perception of people outside of Hereford or businesses outside of Hereford that, that actually Hereford is a good place for them to make their home and bring um, an economic revival to Hereford? because I cannot see that what I've heard today, that, that that is going to lead to anything but more of the same as what we've had for many, many years. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, Councillor Swinglehurst, followed by Councillor James. Th sorry, thank you, Mr. Chair. I was struggling to unmute there, but I'm I'm good. Thank you. Um, so listening to the debate, it, it strikes me that there are a couple of sort of false binaries that are developing. Um, one of them is, is between the environment and the economy. And I think that has been picked up previously. That actually there's a false binary. Uh, that it's a choice and a balance. It's not, it's not either or. Um, and the other thing is that, that, that the binary between building a road and having active travel measures, whereas in fact the one uh, could be seen to be enabling the other by uh, creating uh, space. Um, so, so I think we, we, we do need to, to see this as a, a balance of considerations. Um, just as, for instance, um, you know, if you were to hold your breath, uh, you, you would be holding uh, roughly 25 millilitres of carbon dioxide in your lungs, uh, waiting for you to exhale, and it's a greenhouse gas. So for the sake of the environment, you might consider what you do next, but the chances are we would all take another breath or we would asphyxiate and die. Uh, so therefore, you know, the, 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 these binaries are not helpful because I think that Hereford deserves to take another breath. It, it doesn't deserve to be suffocated by nitro, nitrogen dioxide and strangulated by congestion. And the, again, it's indicative of, of these, these false binaries that it's very hard to be absolute in a debate like this. Cabinet members who find the idea of a Western Bridge and Road unacceptably damaging to the environment nevertheless support uh, an Eastern option, um, which, which would also, I think, as, uh, as Herbstreit Wildlife Trust pointed out, have damaging consequences. Personally, I'm not ideologically wedded to a Western bypass. I am wedded to the desire to de-traffic Hereford. I really want to see our city walls without a miasma of diesel smoke. I would like the children who are growing up and going to school by the A49 not to be running the increased risk of both mental and physical illness due to poor air quality. I am wedded to the notion that Hereford needs a prosperous economy to pay for public services and to give our young people a decent chance at a good job. I am wedded to the idea that we need to build homes where there are services and employment, not out in the middle of nowhere. I'm wedded to the idea that a single river crossing is not a resilient network. I'm wedded to the idea that it would be a good thing to detrunk the A road and as a result to be able to devote more road space to bicycles and buses. But it is my belief that none of these things can happen unless we build an alternative route. And the only way for all of them to happen, in my view, is to build it to the west. The, the, the impact on climate change is, is a very serious matter, but the impact on the, the lives and livelihood of, of, of Hereford and Herefordians is, is equally important. And it is these people that I feel we should be representing. We should be doing the right thing for Hereford, Herefordshire, the people who live here, the businesses who work here, the children who are growing up here. In the near future, the cars will be electric vehicles, the lorries hydrogen, but unless they're chitty chitty bang bang, they'll still need a road. Thank you. And that was just over, fine. Uh, Councillor James, Shaw and Hitchener in that order, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, it, yes, I, I support the, the Eastern Bridge uh, as far as that, but the point is that that is never going to go any further than the bridge. There is no, and you know, the the majority of the administration at the present would oppose an eastern bypass as even more vehemently than a western route. But it's the financial implications of this. It's all very well as a as a previous cabinet meeting for the cabinet member to say it's only the the financial implications are only a, a technical accounting process they will have serious implications for this council. We're entering a very, very difficult time. We're going to see mass redundancies, even in Hereford, with, with shops that are closing. Once the furlough scheme ends, there'll be mass um, redundancies in Hereford. There will be less people able to pay to their council tax. We've introduced, which I support, the 100% um, rebate for uh, council taxpayers who cannot afford um, the payment. But there are those that fall just above the, the criteria for that, which will hit them very badly. And to take millions and millions of pounds out of 
capital and put them into out of revenue and put them into cap, capital and have to fund that out of revenue, those monies will bring about enormous problems. I don't think you realize how much we're going to, our income is going to reduce in the coming um, two years at least before we see any likelihood of any upturn in the, in the economy. You are going to be in serious financial difficulties. We will be short of revenue. And to put on top 5% increase in the council tax is unacceptable for the vast majority of people in this county. Thank, thank you, Councillor. Uh, we have now Councillor Shaw, followed by Councillor Hitchener. Councillor Shaw, are you there? Thank you. Yes, just a second. Mr Chairman, <clears throat> councillors have heard the ambitious plans for social housing uh, south of the river. Plans for over 2,000 homes, I believe, at Ashley Farm, where I understand the cabinet member responsible has admitted that an upgrade of road infrastructure will be required to facilitate these homes. So I suppose it's inevitable that tarmac will need to be laid because unfortunately not everyone can work from home. But, but, but what are our ambitions for carbon neutral county? How, how can putting down tarmac meet the challenge of our climate and ecological emergency? You'll recall that the previous administration was already delivering beyond its carbon reduction targets through lead LED street lighting, office infrastructure upgrades and new electric vehicles. You will recall that the introduction of barrel bikes was an initiative of the previous administration. But I don't think we can mindlessly chant Snowball's condensation of the seven commandments of Extinction Rebellion, two wheels good, four wheels bad. We also need to enable and deliver sustainable development and facilitate the expansion of our economy. Mr. Chairman, I'm sure you'd agree that in a county like ours, we need to embrace new transport opportunities and freeing our city of a trunk road is critical if our citizens are going to move around the city quickly and safely. The major development to the north of the city, the new cattle market, has achieved incredible success, but I hear its future growth is stymied by the time it's taken to move livestock through Hereford from the south. It's a sad fact that the administration seems to be proud that the only city or town along the length of the A49 not bypassed is Hereford. The remainder of the county and perhaps the country is just embarrassed. We see Worcester, Shrewsbury and similar cities press ahead with significant schemes and become more prosperous. I've yet to hear a compelling argument that a means of detrunking the A49 through the city would not require a bypass of some form and I do fear for the future of Herefordshire as the rest of the country leaves it further behind. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Shaw. Uh, Councillor Hitchner? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I am listening to this uh, debate with considerable interest. My ward is Stony Street, which includes Cleehonga, Madley, Eden Bishop and Bridge Solars. Uh, for my residents, the issues are the traffic down the Belmont Road and the impact of making changes to Bridge Solace, uh, which might, might come through in due course. There are strong, strong voices in my ears supporting the Western Bypass and the SLR, but equally strong ones opposing it. I also, of course, have a role as leader of the council, which brings perhaps a broader view. Uh, the opponents, of course, are, are um, uh, Referring to the length of time that's been committed to this project, uh, issues with business, um, and, and as Councillor James has said, concerns looking forward to uh, affordability. And of course, if the, if the original proposals were to go ahead, that would involve considerable cost. Um, Councillor Lester has mentioned uh, that uh, this project might be the most favoured one in the report, but of course it's by far and away the most expensive. And the proposal which we're considering is, is half the cost uh, so I don't think anybody would, would want to go ahead with, with a, a project which is so expensive. Um, just some points which are from, from my perspective, and I haven't really heard any responses uh, to my mind which are satisfactory. First, only 7% of traffic which passes through the city uh, goes straight the way through. So we're spending a huge amount of money on a bypass just to satisfy 7% of the traffic. I mentioned the cost. Uh, the building of a bypass will... 
uh, make the A49 a much more attractive route for traffic, which would otherwise use the M5 on roads and through villages that are really not suitable for this level of traffic. Um, the idea of a, a, a new road passing right the way through a housing estate just strikes me as being uh, rather, rather strange. And then, of course, there's the suggestion that the money was there. Well, it really, in honesty, it wasn't. Um, the, the, the business case still had to be written. Uh, that had to be written on the basis that it, this, this SLR stood on its own uh, without reference to the bypass. And really, the Southern Relief Road could, was, was only justifiable if the bypass was being built. So I, I just encourage members, I, I, I think we... We have an opportunity to do things differently in Herefordshire. We have an opportunity to show Hereford as the centre really for environmental excellence, for doing things differently. The public want things to be done differently. The young people want things to be done differently. And I think central government do so as well. So I think Herefordshire has the opportunity to lead the way. And I look forward to that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hitchner. Uh, I've got Four other, five others, I think, and excuse then I'm going to call it a... Excuse me, Chairman, a point of order. I just think we ought to... Be, point of order? We just, I think, just think we need to be aware as members that Captain Tom Moore has died um, about 10 minutes, well, it was announced about 10 minutes ago. Thank you. Well, he was a huge campaigner, wasn't he, for uh, help for those who are suffering. Well, that's a sad, sad moment, but uh, we must go on. No doubt we shall bow our heads in our own rooms and think about him. But I've got Councillor Ianson, Tillard, Chowns, Milne and Jinman. I'm going to call it to a close there and go to the amendment. I think we've had plenty of discussion. So Councillor Ianson, if you'll be brief, please. Yeah, thank you. I couldn't, I couldn't get muted. Um, Right, speaking from the wilds of Lebury, and to say that I moved into Herefordshire in 2013 and approximately 80% of my trips into Hereford have either involved going to the council offices or to the hospital. During my stint of daily visits to the Macmillan, Macmillan Renton unit, I couldn't have coped with getting there by public transport. And how many of you who are not city councillors used to attend meetings relying on their car. Therefore, the provision of an effective road network has significant impact on jobs, housing, sport, etc., across the whole county. Herefordshire has a severe housing shortage and without city developments, excessive pressure will be put onto the market towns to supply the required numbers. And can I just paint you a picture uh, can I ask you to look at, visualise a kitchen last updated in the 60s? You've seen television programmes and it's got orange tinted cupboard doors, some slightly dro dropping off their hinges for mica work surfaces, a bit chipped and peeling at the edges. Strip lights, gas cooker with no extractor, washing machine next to the dishwasher, fridge in front of garden door, leading to outside WC and coal shed. Now that's a, what I... Um, picture of Hereford in 2021. So, and when you design a kitchen, especially a commercial kitchen, one of the first things you consider is continuous flow. So if you build an extension out to the west of the kitchen, that creates a utility room for your white goods and cloakroom. The end wall of the kitchen can be opened up to bifold doors leading on to terrace garden and river beyond, table placed in front for meals for children to do homework. Central Ireland, units with wall-mounted double oven, induction hob, concealed ceiling lights, granite and composite work surfaces, and you have a spacious light and sociable hub, ventilation and workflow, and with the cost incurred far outweighed by the benefits and energy efficiency and added value that the con conversion puts onto the price of your house. And I quote from parts of an article written in March 2020, entitled Herefordshire Bypass, Yes Please. The communities that live along the A49 are among the most deprived in the county. They have no choice but to breathe in the fumes of traffic that move with glacial slowness to cross the only road bridge built in the city for 500 years. 
When the Herefordshire Bypass was first muted about 30 years ago, it was planned to the east of the city over a large floodplain, which is the largest and best preserved Lummis 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 Meadow. You've the end of your time, I'm afraid. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Councillor Tillett now, please, followed by Councillor Chans. Thank you, Chairman. I've, I've listened to this debate with great interest, but I am concerned um, about a, a, another false binary, to, to use Councillor Swinglehurst's words. Um, there has been much talk about the problem of short journeys um, and, and our concern for local people making local journeys. And then on the other hand, the talk of a bypass, which will serve only a relatively small proportion of through, through journeys. In fact, I was distressed, quite frankly, to hear the leader of the council say just now, we will spend all this money just for 7% of the traffic. Well, those two are a, are, are a false binary. There is overlap, and that overlap is due to the lack of connectivity within the city. One of the reasons Councillor Hitchener's ward residents, much like mine, and indeed, like many residents across the southern, the wider southern Y, the reason we have to make short journeys into Hereford is to get out the other side. Uh, for instance, uh, a simple and necessary journey to the crematorium involves most Southsiders having to sit in the traffic on Belmont Road or Ross Road over the bridge and then make our way out along West Failing Street. Similarly, uh, to go on to Wyvale for shopping. These are short journeys, but they would be removed from the city by the presence of the Southern Link Road and in particular the bypass. Uh, they would achieve what we all want, which is to remove traffic that is congesting and polluting the city centre. Similarly with the Southern Link Road, um, there are there's a great deal of traffic from the south coming home to Hunterton, to Newton Farm, that is channeled down all the way into Hereford to the Broad Lees and is then forced to rat run along Walnut Tree uh, Avenue or indeed through one or two technically illegal rat runs in, in Red Hill or worse still through the Callow or a number of the rat runs further out in the county that Councillor Fagan mentioned much earlier. It, it, it is not the bypass for through traffic and small journeys are all coming to Hereford and cannot be solved by it. There is an overlap. Bypasses and relief roads, link roads, call them what you will, will prevent many of us having to drive into the centre of Hereford and use the single river crossing. It is what we all want. It is a question of balance, but please let's not pretend that the two are completely separate worlds there is a great deal of overlap, and it's due to the lack of connectivity within the city. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Charles, please. And then followed by Councillor Milne and Ginman, who will be the last speaker. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, as I've been listening to the debate very carefully, and, and as I read the papers that we have before us, I've been asking myself, you know, one question really, what's the best thing for Herefordshire? And there's several dimensions to that. You know, first of all, what's best for the people of Herefordshire? I, I think we need to invest in transport that works for everybody. So I was really struck by um, the report saying that a quarter of Herefordshire residents have no access to a private car or van. And the figure's even higher, nearly a half in parts of the south side. And so for me, that highlights the fact I think we need to make it easier for everybody to get around within the city and easier for everybody to come into the city. That's what will help Hereford thrive in the way that it deserves. You know, a bypass essentially encourages people to drive around the city and it wouldn't help everybody who needs to get in and, in and around. The, the second is what's best for the environment of Herefordshire. So we agree, you know, we've unanimously agreed we face a climate emergency, we face an ecological emergency. That's nationally recognised decarbonising transport is central government policy. And that recognition needs to feed through into what we actually do on the ground now. And it needs to feed through now. You know, as one of the earlier speakers in this debate said, we need to put our money where our mouth is. 
And I think that's, you know, that's part of the decision that we are facing today. And the third thing is what's best for the economy of Herefordshire. You know, I, I said before, I want to make it easier for people to get into and around the city. I want our city to absolutely thrive. And I want to do that spending money in the best way possible because as, as somebody said earlier again you know money is tight we need to spend it really in a really careful way and it's crystal clear from the report that by far the best value is provided by those active travel measures you know councillor lester cited figures from the report and you know i i would refer him and 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 you colleagues to page 82 of the technical report page 226 of our papers today, which says that the package with the bypass has the lowest value for money of all the assessed packages. It's, it's more than three times more expensive than sustainable transport measures that would give us the same amount of carbon of, of congestion reduction, 14%. For 57 million with walking and cycling, for about 200 million with a bypass. Now, we, we know this report tells us we don't need to do a bypass before we do those active travel measures. We can do them now. We all agree we want to reduce congestion and air pollution. We all agree on that. The question is, what is the best way to do that? How should we spend our money? And we should spend it in the best value for money way that will benefit everybody in Herefordshire. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Milne now. And then um, Councillor yeah. Thank you, Chair. Yes, <clears throat> as um, fellow members on planning committee know, a uh, few meetings escape cultural or historical reference from me, though my question is, is forward-looking. A southern link road would spoil the medieval forest of hay, designated by William the Conqueror himself. It extended across Grafton and Haywood and is preserved in its ancient woods, its fine Hager or lodge and its glorious aspect to the city. It was the stone and timber of this forest which built the city of Hereford, its fuel which warmed its residents, its stock which fed them in shares with the bishop and the king. A western bypass would spoil the park at Belmont, designed by Humphrey Repton, following the English landscape style of Lancelot Capability Brown. It would sever the link, the abbey and lodge, as highly graded listed buildings by James Wyatt and Edward Welby Pugin enjoy with the city and this is just the section of the scheme south of the river should members decide to endorse the proposition to discontinue the road schemes in favor of, of sustainable transport for the city would uh, councillor harrington or perhaps uh, councillor chance like to articulate looking forwards a vision which such assets taking a, a regenerative grow local type approach might offer for Herefordians economically, socially and environmentally in line with our commitments to deliver carbon neutrality and green infrastructure. Uh, thank you. Uh, I will give Councillor Harrington his chance when he rounds up the debate. Uh, Councillor Ginman, last on the list. Sorry to those who have been um, excised. Thank you very much, Chairman. I'm most grateful. Um, I've been listening very closely to this debate because it's, if you'd asked me this question 10 years ago, 20 years ago and 30 years ago, when I was going backwards and forwards through the city all the time, I would have had a very different view, possibly from where I'm sitting today. And I thought that the comment that was made uh, by uh, Councillor Bowes about the fact that it was going to be quicker to build houses than build bypasses uh, was a sort of rather telling one in the sense that the timing of this is is crucial to any consideration the idea from the consultants that it's seven to ten years which is going to coincide with the very change in the way in which we will be forced by government to drive so the, the sitting in diesel fumes will be a should be a matter of history at that point. In fact, I'm almost bound to say with the new environment bill, I would have thought it will be. So that seems to me to be a rather telling point. I think also I, one can trade statistics and frankly, uh, I don't think they value us at all in this debate. Uh, it's very, very difficult to follow them through in a logical way in a three minute moment. And I think it just uh, deals with it. my biggest concern throughout this has been the waste of money. 
I, the, the total sum that's involved in getting this. And may I ask uh, uh, Councillor Harrington and Councillor Harvey, is this money assured? Is the 200 plus million actually sitting in the bank or in a promise that can assure us that it would have gone ahead? Because otherwise it is a, a wish and not a fact. And that to me is pretty fundamental. If I'm spending, I like to know I've got the money. As somebody said earlier, it's a gamble otherwise. And it's certainly not one I would be prepared to take uh, for those who will follow on as councillors in the future behind me. Thank you. I think that's been, we've had a very thorough and long lasting debate. I hope everyone feels they've had a good area. We now come to the amendment proposed by Councillor Kenyon and circulated on the 1st of February. And I'll read it to you, and I'm sure it'll be displayed on the screen as well. And it is that recommendation A and B be split into amendments A, B, and C as follows. A, proceed with the progress of the South Y transport package projects, including one, a southern link road between A49 and A465, two, pedestrian crossing improvements to Belmont Road and A49 in Hereford Urban Area, three, cycle and walking provision on and off road at A49 and A465, four, residential cycling schemes in Belmont and Bullingham, and consider how the approved route will facilitate a second river crossing. And B, stop the progress of the Western Bypass Scheme, which is included in the adopted policy, and C, make an amendment to the capital programme such that the Hereford Transport Plan is removed from the program. Uh, Councillor Kenyon, please introduce your proposed amendment and your amendment has been displayed and read out as well. And you have three minutes to expose your plans and ideas. Thank you. Well, thank you, Chairman. I've no, uh, I'm not, not planning to expose myself in any way, to be honest with you, but uh, I did think about Selling a joke, a chubby brown one to cheer everyone up or put a smile on people's faces because it all does seem to be a bit of doom and gloom this afternoon. And people draw their lines and they, they get in their trenches, and I can see it coming. Um, I, I, I'm in a position where I've been opposition councillor now to uh, a few a few administrations. Um, obviously, they won't let me anywhere near them. Um, but I, I also have no party political lines or anything I need to follow. And when I looked at this, this is my first opportunity to really have my say, as I don't sit on scrutiny or anything like that, which we've talked about before. Um, as I understand, there's some good work that's been going on with the Eastern Crossing that potentially coming along. I've been a big supporter of that. And at that time, I mentioned that if it didn't go as far as the Lebby Road, um, I wouldn't support that Eastern City Bridge at all. It's because the other side, the vehicles need to be able to disperse and get away from the bridge. Now, it's pretty similar with the Southern Link Road. This is why I brought this up. Um, what I'm trying to do with this amendment is give something to everybody. Um, in life, you don't always get everything you want. Um, if you can take a little bit of what you need and move it along, that's where we're at. So I just want to draw your attention to uh, the bullet point one in A, where it says road route. Um, that means different things to other people. Read it again. What does that mean to you? Does that mean we have to follow the routes already there or can we go in a different way? When I first put this amendment forward, the officers, I was informed that if I took the word new uh, road route out from the Southern Link Road, um, there may be an opportunity to save some money. Perhaps someone will talk about that later in the debate. But, but I, I, all, I, all I want you to do is look at it, read it, and think what it means to you. Because if we sit, I've been a councillor for 10 years now, too long, people may say, but um, all that time we've had these issues with transport and everything everything the last administration's done has always been bad well not everything they did was bad some of it was good and i'm sure this administration they're doing some great things but it's not all going to be good if we can pick between that and in 10 years time we might just get something delivered if we continue to argue about things nothing will be done so i appeal to you councillors it's not about the, the, the coalition of 27 it's not about 51 councillors sat here today. It's about now there's 180,000 residents of, of Herefordshire. By the time anything's built, there's going to be 200,000. The green issues, I get all of that. And, and that's why there's some stuff in there. And that should be in conjunction with a Southern Link Road route 
taking in on board some of what's already there, but incorporating new stuff um, along with an Eastern City Bridge. So um, that's the debate opened. Go. Thank, thank you very much and brilliantly in time. Well done. Uh, Councillor Matthews, as seconder, do you wish to speak now or at the end of the debate? Do I have to wait until the end? Can't I come in after about five or seven? Uh, you either speak now or you speak at the end of the debate. Well, I better speak now because I want people to uh, hear what I say so that they consider what's, uh, uh, what approach we're taking. Uh, tell me when you're going to start me because I've got a fair bit to get through. Starting you now. Right, members will be well aware that I've always been strongly opposed to a Western bypass for many years because it's become quite clear to me that the majority of local businessmen and others would prefer an Eastern route plus substantial improvements to the A49 South to link up with the M50 at Ross on Y. These recommendations would be far the most beneficial to the local economy and help provide the desperately needed secure well jobs within the county. It's high time that our local MPs put more pressure on the highway agency to get this highly dangerous stretch of highway upgraded. The cost of work for a Western route would be approximately double the cost of the alternative. There would also be the issue of many recognized environmental issues, I accept they happen everywhere, to overcome, plus the fact that the road will pass through an area of outstanding natural beauty, it must also be pointed out that the proposed route would pass through the very center of land, earmarked for extensive development. So within a few years, it would not be defined as a bypass. Instead, it would be nothing more than another inner city link road causing even more dangerous pollution to the city area generally, and the frequent prevailing western winds would further aggravate the situation. An eastern river crossing would also help attract new businesses into the enterprise zone and the county generally. It would also significantly improve the response times of our emergency services to the south of the river at peak times. The public generally would also have, uh, have much improved access to the colleges, hospitals and railway stations, uh, et cetera, further reducing city center congestion and air pollution. The two independents therefore support the recommendation to, I've got papers everywhere, to stop the Western Bypass and Southern Link Road in its present form. However, officers should be instructed to deliver a more cost-effective and environmentally sustainable route, and these, these are the important words, utilizing sections of the existing plan. And I'll ask Mr. Lovegrove to report to at the end on the uh, uh, decapitalized situation and the gains to be had from that. Because it, it, it's in our view that a road link between the A465 at Belmont and A49 at Grafton is essential for heavy goods vehicles and other traffic en route to the Enterprise Zone. This will also allow full use of the proposed New Eastern River crossing. Vehicles will still use Awood Lane if it's left in its present form, causing untold damage and danger to other motorists and local residents. It's also important that more traffic is taken off the A465 at Belmont to help alleviate the present serious congestion and dangerous levels of air pollution within the Newton Farm area, which had been at constant high levels for, for, for many years to the detriment of the health and well-being of the local residents. It's my understanding this is what the local residents in Belmont would prefer for the above mentioned reasons. The Newton Farm Ward is not represented at Sorry, Councillor, we've had to come to time. And uh, did you, Councillor, did you want to ask, did you, was that a question you were asking of uh, Mr. Lovegrove? Can you, can you, uh, can you unmute yourself, please? Can, sorry, can you unmute? I can't hear you. Un sorry, I, I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry, Councillor Matthews, did you want Mr. Lovegrove to answer a question? Yes, but I had a few more words that sums it all up. Yes, Mr. Lovegrove will tell you that with that wording in, 
decapitalization and there'll be a fi uh, substantial financial savings. But again, Chairman, I'm appalled by the fact that I'm representing two wards and the main Western route goes through my ward and I'm cut off after a few seconds. So much for democracy. I have consult consulted the monitoring office on that and I was told very firmly that the empty ward does not entitle you to speak for more than your a lot of time. I'm very sorry about that. I understand your grief. Uh, Mr. Lovegrove, do you want to have a quick word in response to Mr. Councillor Matthews' uh, question? Uh, thank you, Chair. If I understand the, the question that I'm being asked, it's about um, how we capitalise expenditure and what policies we follow. Um, uh, rules are quite clear. We capitalise expenditure on roads and the preparation of those once we've identified a route. So in terms of the Southern Link Road, a route has been identified and therefore we are able to capitalise the costs. If I understand what's being proposed by the proposer and seconder is to, in effect, review that route and possibly use sections of the um, existing route and either find a different uh, way of putting the road through or using that. If that is the case, then clearly um, we will need that review to conclude to see whether um, we can continue to capitalise all or some of the current costs on there, but uh, we will need to be clear what the new route will look like before we can decide whether we continue to capitalise those costs. Uh, thank you. Um, so, we now come to, to the debate itself. Will all those who wish to speak are indicating, I imagine, on, the, on my screen, We've got Councillor Davis, Councillor Roan, Councillor Phillips, Councillor Durkin, Shaw, Foxton, Selden, Bowes, and Guthrie and Johnson. Uh, Councillor Bowen, apologies for the interruption. Uh, Councillor Selden wishes to raise a point of order. Can you tell me what the point of order is, please, and demonstrate where it comes in the Constitution? Councillor Selden? Thank you. Sorry, I, I, I um, it seems to me what's being proposed here as an amendment is actually a new scheme. Can I just ask whether the monitoring officer, whether this is part of this debate, or is it an, something else that falls outside the scope of this debate and decapitalising the uh, existing projects, or is this a completely new scheme? Monitoring officer, can you give us guidance, please? She did actually take it as an amendment, so I presume she was happy with it. As I, as I understand it, this is continuing the pause and reviewing the SLR to decide what is the best route. So it's a perfectly legitimate amendment. That, I think that is probably a yes. Um, so, a debate, please. We have Councillor Davis, Councillor Roan, Councillor Phillips, please. Sorry, I couldn't unmute for a little while. Apologies about that. Um, yeah, so I firstly want to applaud councillors Kenyon and Matthews for trying to do their best to prevent us having to decapitalise the money already spent on designing the Southern Link Road. It's what I've been trying to do since I was made aware of the significant issues surrounding the procurement and planning designs. Believe in democracy. And the first thing that I did was to check whether this was possible, whether a solution had been found whereby the current route could be cancelled and that we could look to utilise the current infrastructure to connect the A49 to the A465, all without having to decapitalise the money spent. Um, we've also heard from Councillor Matthews that he's fully against the current scheme. Um, so I do need a bit of clarification from the Section 151 officer on this, because I think this is slightly confusing. I thought that the amendment said that a route was coming forward. Now we're hearing that it's about if parts of the route are coming forward. Are we proposing here an amendment to an amendment? Because that's I just need to understand that um, from the monitoring officer. But my thing, I think at the heart of what Councillors Kenyon and Councillor Matthews are saying is the desire to connect the A49 and the A465. And with that, I'm absolutely with you. You know that. I've had lots of conversations. However, I think that this can be done quicker, cheaper, and with less damage to the environment by utilising the current infrastructure. I always said I'd hold any councillor to account. So Councillor Harrington, could I have an agreement today for the residents of my ward that you will be fully committing to work being undertaken at pace 
to look at ways in which we can improve the current infrastructure connecting the A49 and the A465, and that this will involve all of the Southside councillors of which this affects. Um, thank you. Um, I think, Councillor Harrington, you could make that assurance very quickly. I think you've already more or less made it, haven't you? I have, and I can confirm it, and it can be done quicker, and there was money available to look at that work, whereas there isn't on the SLR. Thank you. Uh, uh, can I ask the monitoring officer a brief question? Does she... I, I am of the opinion this is not an amendment to an amendment, otherwise it wouldn't be here. This is an amendment. I think we're correct. Exactly. There. We can't have an amendment to an amendment. Um, A1 says A Southern Link Road route between the A49 and A465. Mm, There's quite. no amendment. Yes, I agree. Thank you. Uh, now we've got Councillor... Uh, uh, Chairman, sorry to interrupt you. Um, could we just check that Councillor Hitchener can hear, hear and see us as he dropped out uh, very momentarily ago? Oh, right, yes. Uh, Councillor Hitchener, can you see and hear us? Sorry, just for a moment. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't unmute myself then either. Yes, I can hear and see and have, have been able to do so for some time. Thank you. We can see and hear you as well, just for the avoidance of doubt. Uh, Councillor Roan, Councillor Phillips and Councillor Durkin, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I was a, just so I was a little bit disappointed to say the least that I couldn't speak before. I think I'm one of the only councillors who, whose ward is split in half by the A49. And to sit there listening to people contribute from other parts of the county when you know the people of Red Hill could really have done with a voice at this meeting. But I'll, I'll, I'll carry on now if that's all right with you. Listening to the discussions around upgrading existing roads to connect the A465 and the A49, I've got this picture in my head now of mile after mile of hedgerow along the Bridge Solers to Madley Road, as well as the Landworn to Locks Garage Road and the Back Callow, or being scrubbed out. Is that, is that what the, the plan is, to take out thousands or hundreds of years of, uh, of uh, hedgerow to upgrade? I mean, uh, we've, we've got to remember, it's easier to build new than it ever is to refurbish or retrofit. Um, but if you live in uh, Newton Farm or Belmont or Henderton, there is only one route option for you, and it's the A465 Belmont Road. doesn't matter where you're going, your journey starts off by going on to the Belmont Road. There's no nip foos, no cut rounds. You've got to use that road. Uh, between the normal uh, classic shift pattern work times, start times and finish times, Walnut Tree Avenue, Home Lacey Road, as well as Belmont Road, are all alive with commuters from these residential areas heading to the biggest employment area in the county. Yes, they could go on bikes, and they probably should go on bikes, but for other reasons, they choose not to. Now, you add to this, everyone that lives in the A465 corridor, all the way from Hereford to Abergavenny, and works at, contracts to, supplies to, buys from, or does any business in Rutherwas, has to use the Belmont Road, and then nearly all of them choose Walnut Tree Avenue, and then Home Lacey Road to get there. Hundreds upon hundreds of commercial vans, flatbed, seven and a half ton pallet delivery vehicles, all driving through these major residential areas so they can do business at Rutherwas. If we want people to walk and cycle more, we need to get these vehicles out of residential areas, off residential streets, and onto dedicated, fit for purpose, investment inducing Southern Link Road, which would take them straight to where they need to be. Colleagues, we're making this momentous decision today. It's gonna to affect the city and the county for a generation if not decades to come. Making this decision today will probably be the most important act you ever do as an elected member. If you've not experienced how bad the traffic can be on an hourly, if not daily basis, you're ill prepared. So take it from the member of the Red Hill, a taxi driver for nearly 20 years who understands how the city moves and who loves where he lives. We don't just want the Southwide Transport Plan colleagues, we desperately, desperately need it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry you didn't have a chance before, but I think you've made up for it. Thank you. And Councillor Phillips now, followed by Councillor Durkin and then Shaw. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, road building has never been very popular in this county, and particularly now. Um, I know because I was responsible for the Rotherwas Access Road. It's the only new road that's been built in Hereford City for over 50 years. And I remember those campaigns, but we built it we created an enterprise zone, we made the very best of it, growing businesses, uh, and with public and private money, 
We secured the 2,000 jobs there and created 500 more, and WIDA has more potential still to deliver decent wages and incomes in the future, which is desperately needed in this county and not featuring much in this debate. The Southern Link Road has always been part of that deal, and to deliver it, we also need to get the full potential of the zone. To vote against it is to deny those decent jobs, continue congestion, and send negative signals. In the eight years that I chaired and oversaw the West Midlands Regional Transport Partnership, I learned how government, the civil service, and the treasury operated firsthand, it, and how long it takes to mature highway schemes. Clearly, many councillors don't understand that process. This year, the government has, has, has uh, top slide is the £1.7 billion road transport grant for 50 specific schemes. Very few highways will be ready to go. We have a scheme in the Southern Link Road that would be capable in a very advanced stage to deliver. We would have the best chance yet to get that road built with government money here today. And I don't think Herefordians will ever forget or forgive us if we don't. As the cabinet member and the leader admits, the Hereford Bypass exists today. It's called the Lullum Lane from Bridge Solers to Madley, or Hayward Lane from Belmont to Callow and Grafton. And you can travel at any mornings or evenings to see it. These unclassified roads, by the sounds of it, will become our bypasses of the future in some third-rate scheme that's going to be developed. Nowhere else in the country would that be done. The Eastern Bridge is a deception and a distraction. It will struggle to meet the national best value for money threshold, it will, it will move congestion in the city, not reduce it, and it doesn't overcome the ecological issues. And indeed, it creates more issues by creating an eastern bypass through Bartistry and Lagwadine and the little lanes of Lumber, the Cots, and Whitestone. We have to get the trunk road out of the city. Apart from Aylston Hill, much of Hereford is level and you could create more sustainable internal transport system if it was removed. We have the opportunity to make our city an exemplar in sustainable traffic with the capacity it would release. I urge people today to support the Southern Link Road and keep that going and also the bypass. Thank you. And now we have Councillor uh, Durkin and then Councillor Shaw. So, apologies, Chairman, I was uh, at difficulty unmuting. Right. Um, I have, Council, I've listened to the debate so far, and I will continue to listen, obviously, but I consider that both road schemes need to be considered individually, as in my view, they serve different purposes, albeit for a common purpose. I wish to comment on the Southern Link Road provision and air quality within Hereford City and along the A49 trunk, trunk corridor and the potential effect of congestion and pollution as we move forward through the years. The South Wales Transport Package provides access to Rotherwood, the industrial centre of Hereford and Herefordshire, and a provider of many, many jobs that need to be successful and resilient. The Southern Link Road Package includes a two-mile link of road to major routes, but also includes many active travel measures and is a key piece of infrastructure to promote growth and enable us to introduce active travel measures in the South White area. On agenda, page 18, environmental impact. At 28, it says there is no specific environmental impact as a result of this report relating to the stopping of the two road schemes. The two road schemes were developed in part to reduce emissions in the city. How can scrapping the Western Bypass and Southern Link Road not have an environmental impact? It's perverse. In Hereford, transport and South White packages dated 24th of January 2020, key considerations were pausing the best the bypass and Southern Link Road and reviewing the transport strategy. Strategy at line three, um, at three, um, in the subsequent decision of the 24th of January 2020, confirmed that the purpose of the relief road was at bullet to ensure any major schemes has a positive impact on the county to address travel issues such as congestion and air quality, as these schemes have a permanent impact upon the environment which lasts for generations to come. Can the cabinet members show sufficient evidence that scrapping of the scheme and implementing other schemes that toxic emissions will reduce the air quality impact whilst the A49 continues to go through the city centre? Even though there is estimated, as the cabinet member said today, as low as 
approximately 7% for all traffic across the bridge, it still represents a significant use for those passing through. For those on the route at 7% of 45,360 over Greyfriars Bridge, that's the agenda of 170 and the cabinet report in 19, it equates circa 3,500 vehicles of all types. In the Hereford Times in January this year, last year, I beg your pardon, hundreds of deaths in Hereford over the next 10 years could be put down to a toxic air, a leading charity is warned. That's the British Heart Foundation. From understanding Herefordshire, generally Herefordshire has low levels of air pollution, though there are still two quality air quality management areas where levels of nitrous oxide, nitrogen oxide are higher than government standards. Hereford air quality are mainly related to traffic. I remember the leader telling us in 2019 when speaking to a... Sorry, you've done your three minutes. Um, thank you. Sorry about that, but we are being very strict today. Uh, Councillor Shaw, followed by Councillor Foxton. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Mr. Chairman, there surely exist for all of us matters of concern and perhaps some still unanswered questions before we can make up our minds. First, I'd like to address the matter of decapitalization of the projects. Officers have stated that the decision by the Council today to come so both projects would mean that 11.833 million pounds, equivalent to a 12% rise in council tax, would need to be found to balance the revenue budget as the capital elements of the two programmes, being 4.42 million for the Hereford Transport Package and 7.413 million for the South Wye Transport Package, need to be moved from a capital expense to a revenue expense in the books. The proposal is to find this money from an earmarked reserve, the Financial Resilience Reserve. This earmarked reserve was established by the last administration to pool additional funds delivered from a recalculation of MRP, the minimum revenue provision, which is currently releasing in excess of £3 million a year. The reserve was established as an evergreen reserve to make funding available for departments to meet to invest in spend to save schemes requiring revenue expense. Departments making savings as a result of their investment would return revenue into the reserve, which would eventually be available to pay back down the MRP amounts as a balance swings towards an increased expenditure in about 20 years time. The reserve was not established to provide rainy day funding, and its loss to the council in this way is surely disappointing. Councillors will know that rainy day funding is held by council in a general reserve, currently some 9.3 million. This reserve is not earmarked for a particular use in any way, and I believe that this is the reserve that should be used to facilitate decapitalisation. I'd like Mr Lovegrove to comment on this irregular use of an earmarked reserve and why the general reserve is not being, being used. Additionally, only one of the strategic housing sites in the northern urban expansion has started, Homer West. Part of the 106 agreement was a sum of 1.935 million for sustainable transport measures and contribution to the Western Relief Road. Payable in four separate payments as the build-out happens, the first 25% payment has already been made. If the decision today is to cancel the Western Relief Road, can the officer confirm that we have to pay back the sum of £485,000? And if so, is it shown in the table on paragraph uh, 34, table 2? Mr Chairman, I think both road schemes need to be viewed separately, that they serve different purposes with a common thread, but one is far more advanced than the other. And I'm confident that some councillors will appreciate the opportunity on vote of them on separately as per the proposed amendment. The South Wye transport package is advanced. Planning permission has been obtained, compulsory purchase orders served, and the scheme awaits a successful procurement to provide the final documentation for the DOT business case to be submitted. There's been much speculation about this. I'd like Mr. Ball to confirm that this impediment is that the, uh, in that the business case cannot be submitted until such a scheme has been tendered and a successful tender costs identified. Sorry, you come to the end of your run. Sorry about that, but my apologies. Uh, Mr. Lovegrove, I think the one or two questions there that were asked of you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, in terms of the question about the use of reserves, uh, the, that, that's a decision for Council. It's, uh, you have earmarked reserves and general reserves. The proposal coming from Caput is to use 
uh, the earmark, reserve the financial resilience reserve. So that is the proposal that is in front of you. Uh, it is for council to decide how it wants to use its reserves on there. Um, that's I, I'm comfortable with the proposal that's put in put in front of you today. Thank you. Uh, there was a question, Mr. Ball, as well. Is he here? Not. Yes. Oh. Did you did you get the gist of the question? I understand the question was uh, completion of a business case for the Department of Transport requires a tender price, yes. tendered price. So yes, I can confirm that that is one of the requirements of the Department of Transport. Thank you. Any further comments on it? No, I, think, I think that answers the point. Hopefully. Thank you. Uh, we now come to uh, Councillor Foxton, followed by Councillor Seldon. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? I can hear you and see you. Thank you. Over the last 30 years, all the evidence from traffic surveys show that the majority of vehicles are local. A significant portion of the local traffic is mainly Hereford's working people travelling to and from work each day, several days a week. The Rotherwas Industrial Estate, which includes the new Skyland Business Park, the restored Shell store and the Cyber Security Centre, lies to the southeast of the city. Um, may I possibly ask each and everyone here if prior to COVID you've actually walked around the vast area of the industrial premises? It covers about a square mile and is rapidly developing. And as I speak, diggers and excavators are busy preparing the ground for new factories. The multitude of manufacturing and service businesses employ literally thousands of workers, including the Hereford Times. Um, Rotherwas Industrial Estate is Hereford's wealth generating money tree, whose profits pay for the taxes to fund Hereford hospitals, schools, police, fire services, etc. Many of these businesses need heavy lorries to transport their products. I'd like to ask the good Conservative councillors how a bridge over the river at Brainton, five miles upstream, would help the enterprise zone at Rotherwas and their workers. Unless there's a secret business park at Brainton, which I'm just not aware of. As councillors, we owe it to all the businesses and thousands of workers at Rotherwas to have a 21st century bridge across the river for ease of access. This could extend from the roundabout at the northeast end of the Rotherwas Relief Road across the river to the A438 Ledbury Road. It's also my personal belief that it would be even better if the already planned Southern Relief, Relief Road was built. Industry would have easy direct access from South Wales via the A465 Abergavenny Road and onto the West Midlands via the New River Crossing. In other words, a South West to North East bypass. However, I hold an open mind and shall be weighing up the persuasive arguments. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, we have now Councillor Seldon, followed by Councillor Bowes. Councillor Seldon? I lowered my hand, Chair. Thank you. You've lowered your hand. I'm sorry, it's still up on my, my list. Councillor Bowes. Thank you, Chair. As far as I understand it, we would have to stick specifically to the current proposed SLR route identified to prevent the decapitalisation. There were serious flaws in the construction procurement under the previous administration and the business case wasn't produced to unlock funding before it timed out. My issue with this is the route. The current proposed route goes straight through ancient woodland, would need further planning permission and network rail have issues I understand with the height of the road. We at full council declared a climate emergency. Everyone here supported that. And now when it suits a different agenda, the same councillors are saying they're happy for ancient woodland to be turned into a road. So let's look at our existing roads. I fully support more investment in the South Y where absolutely a great part of the city. What I want is an assurance from Councillor Harrington that he will commission work immediately to look at upgrading road networks in the South Wye and South Herefordshire approaches. I also want an assurance that we are still planning to deliver the walking, cycling and other active travel measures which were originally planned under the wider transport package. 
I agree the South needs a better road infrastructure and we need more investment. What we don't need is a road that requires more planning permission or another review, which we have no money for, and it goes straight through ancient woodlands. Councillor Harrington, I would like your assurance, please. Thank you. Councillor Harrington, quick assurance. Yes, Councillor Bowes, you do have that assurance. I've given it already and I'll give it again. Absolutely have my assurance. Thank you. Chairman, do I get an opportunity to speak at the end of this, I presume? Yes, you yeah. do. Yes, you do. Thank you. You, you, get, um, you get your uh, three minutes at the end of the day. Chairman? I, yes? We are near the three hours. I presume you'll want to continue, but for the record, it's right that you make that decision. Yes, uh, I'd like to continue because I think to stop it now would be foolish. Uh, is everyone else in, in agreement with that? I hope you are. General Assent? Anyone dissenting? We'll carry on. Thank you. We have Councillor Guthrie, Johnson and Lester. Please. Hello, Chairman. Can you hear me? I can hear and see you. Oh, thank you. Yes, um, after listening very carefully to the debate and considering members' comments speaking on the amendment, I am in support of the Southwide Transport Package, which centres on the area of Hereford City South of the River Wye. Here I understand that there are significant traffic congestion problems with the A49 Trunk Road, often incredibly busy with long traffic queues. Indeed, the A465 Belmont Road is also subject to long traffic delays leading to Asda Roundabout. My late father, Councillor John Guthrie, who lived north of Hereford, often found travelling over the bridge to visit south side of Hereford difficult and would only travel that way if absolutely necessary. Due to the level of slow moving gridlocked traffic congestion, which was a regular feature years ago and is the same problem today. I think that the active travel measures proposed within the South Y transport package are very positive for the health and well-being of the residents of the South Y area. Cycling and walking routes to encourage more exercise is excellent news for residents. Reducing the use of the car, improved air quality, improved bus network, as well as the active travel schemes for Lower Bullingham housing development and the Hereford Enterprise Zone. Better employment opportunities will result. Travel plans put in place, especially for schools, will help to minimise traffic congestion and choose how you move campaigns will highlight the different active travel options, which will be so much better for the communities of the South Y area and so much better for the environment too. I encourage members to carefully consider the positive attributes of the South Y transport package, which will primarily relieve traffic congestion, particularly on the Belmont Road. Please use your vote to support the Southern Link Road and the South Y transport package. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Guthrie. We now have Councillor Johnson followed by Councillor Lester. Thank you, Chairman. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can't Thank see you, Chairman. You. <clears throat> I'll be brief. Uh, much of what I was going to say has already been said and I won't repeat, but there, uh, uh, there is one point that I think hasn't come out fully clearly so far. The average age of uh, the county residents is well above the national average. The cost of looking after people in that age group rises faster and faster there will be serious problems if we don't do something about the economy and produce the income. The effects of pandemic and closed shops and loss of business rates, etc., will simply exacerbate a problem that was coming our way anyway. I would really like to have seen the Western Bypass and the South Y package and everything. And I accept, as Jim Kenyon had said earlier on, that you won't always get everything you want. At least we should support the, uh, the the Southern Link Road. At least let's make sure that the Rotherwest Business Park is not strangled 
by um, poor traffic, poor access. At least it encourages more and more people to come along. The jobs that we need, the taxes that they pay, the money that they spend in the city and everything else. If we don't, Hereford, if we don't do that, at least, Hereford will certainly make its mark. And its mark will be as the slowest, most backward city of its size in the country. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, we now have uh, Councillor Lester, followed by Councillor James. Thank you, Chair. Th this amendment is giving members the opportunity to save the Southern uh, Link Road and the uh, South Wide Transport Package. I urge members, before they make their decision, to go and look on the map, whichever map you want to choose, Google Earth, if you like, Google Maps, look at the B4399. That's the road from the A49 straight into the heart of Rotherwas. That road needed to be built. It was built. It was delivered uh, because of the importance, the strategic importance of that, that uh, industrial estate. And so why, why on earth would you not want to link the uh, B4399 to the A465 for that traffic to be able to get to Rotherwas or back out onto the A465. The reasons for supporting the South Y transport package are absolutely obvious, it's self-evident. It's making sure we get that investment. If members want to go east, then it's sensible. You can't do that without this link as well. This is an opportunity to ensure that we don't lose all of the time the effort, the energy that has been put into getting us this far, it would be folly to ignore the value of the Southern Link Road and all of the transport uh, infrastructure projects that are around that. This amendment should not be watered down by distracting from the fact that we should pursue the Southern Link Road in the way that it's been put with the Southern South Wide Transport Package. The amendment supports all of that transport package. Those are necessary things that need to happen, but the funding was there. We need to go back and get that funding. And if you just look at the strategic sense that it makes to put a key road in that place, if you look at the B4399, no one, no one would look at that road now and say that that wasn't a road you should have built. And I urge everyone listening to this debate to see that road for what it is. And it's a major improvement into getting into Rotherwas. And what we're looking for with the South Transport Package and the Southern Link Road is to make the joined up sense of joining that road to the A465. And it will benefit Herefordshire. It will benefit the powerhouse that we've talked about, Rotherwas. It will allow the expansion of that development and so it is absolutely vital that whatever you think about the rest of the projects, do not throw this project out that is so close to ensuring that we get the necessary infrastructure to the heart of our industrial complex in Hereford. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that was uh, Councillor Lester, followed by Councillor James. Thank you, Chairman. Can I congratulate Councillor? Councillor Kenyon on having a, a, a open look at this particular proposal and the, the, the South Wide pack, package and the, uh, the uh, transport package. <laughs> I'm afraid, you know, there are so many closed minds here. Predetermination is across the, the spectrum. Is I, I think 90%, 99% of the members are uh, a predet a predetermination anyway. So it, it, by saying I view this with an open mind is not necessary. C can I say about the Rotherwas Access Road? That was started under my administration and carried on by Councillor Phillips' administration. And we were harangued at the time that it was a road to nowhere. But it saved Rotherwas. There are times now when, when the road is cut off, Home Lacey Road is flooded, etc. It would have to close down. Uh, if it wasn't for the, the Rotherwas Access Road. Likewise, if we're going to save um, um, the um, Rotherwas, we need to improve the, the infrastructure. And this is a, a, a decent compromise, which the, the first item, A, on the amendment, or 
a little a of the amendment will provide not only some improvement in the infrastructure, but it will also save the money being decapitalized and give some relief in the next two years when we sh this council, I will predict, will be in severe financial difficulties. Thank you. And now we come to Councillor Bilderson, please, followed by Councillor Harvey. Thank you, Chair. The Southern Link Road, as part of the Southwide Transport Package, starts and ends within my ward. And as Councillor for Wormside, my main issue is that this is a Hereford transport strategy, not a Herefordshire transport strategy. And the administration is proposing to remove two of the very few strategies that were, that were going to help rural residents, such as those living in Wormside. This raises two concerns for many of my constituents. Firstly, every parish within my ward is concerned with rat running and road safety. And then secondly, there is insufficient infrastructure in the south of the county to support current housing strategies. There's a large number of minor sea roads or laneways situated about five to 15 miles outside the city. And unfortunately, the Hereford Transport Strategy does not take vehicle counts on these roads into consideration. Before COVID, we had almost two and a half thousand cars a day using Haywood and Knocker Hill Lane. And when the planning committee came out to Much Dew Church, we were taking our lives into our own hands as the committee saw, saw lorry after lorry mount the curb in order to get through the village. These roads aren't designed for this amount of traffic, nor heavy goods vehicles, and active travel measures associated with the Southwide Transport Package were being discussed to make roads like Haywood Lane and Knocker Hill Lane access only. As 65% of commuters from Southwest Villages travel to jobs in the city, the Southwide Transport Package was going to have a significant positive impact on rat running, speeding, and road safety in the south of the county. The other concern was that the strategic highway network has no major infrastructure linking the southeast to the southwest, and there are caps on future growth at the Hereford Enterprise Zone and also caps on development around the A49. With major developments like a new railway station, 180 houses in Kingston, 90 houses in Cleonga, 300 houses in Grafton, 1,300 houses in Lower Bullingham, and the recent cabinet decision to potentially place over 2,600 houses on Grafton Lane, the South needs better infrastructure, which the Southwide Transport Package was going to deliver. The council will not be able to deliver all of these houses, plus Hereford Enterprise Zone development, unless traffic capacity is increased. There is over 2,000 miles of road within Herefordshire, and the two miles Southern Link Road was going to help deliver some of this much needed capacity. I do find it hard to understand how the administration plans to deliver on Councillor Harrington's commitment to upgrade the current narrow laneways such as Haywood Lane and the B3, B4348 when houses line either side and both contain narrow chicanes. I appreciate that the Southwide Transport Package was approved prior to our declaration of a climate emergency. However, if you allow it to proceed, there is no reason why the plans cannot be augmented to make it the greenest road possible. It would be naive to think that car usage in such a rural county as Herefordshire will be eliminated. We must improve infrastructure in the south of the county, and I believe we can begin so responsibly with the Southwide Transport Package. Thank you. And we now come to Councillor Harvey, followed by Councillor Fagan and then Tyler. Councillor Harvey. Thank you. Thank you. And um, uh, no, nobody's um, keener than I am to... Um, find ways of saving money, particularly having spent a lot of time and effort along with others trying to find all the savings that we need to put into the budget that we'll be debating in a week or so's time. Councillor Shaw talks about the resilience reserve as being a spend to save investment reserve. And basically, that's what we're faced with here. We are actually having to deal with his spending, his administration's spending, and use this reserve to avoid having to spend more, a lot more. If I draw councillors' attention to the um, paragraph 34 of the report, it has a table there which shows just how much money has been spent already, including on the Western Relief Road and Hereford Transport Package, more than five million pounds in revenue, which should have been being spent 
um, on our existing roads, maintaining and improving our existing roads. So that money has already been robbed from our existing road network. Our officer's attention is diverted for years, looking at trying to make these road schemes work. What we are proposing is that with the packages of active travel measures, the investment in introduce, reintroducing um, efficient, clean, safe, friendly to use buses in the city, we are actually going to be addressing the traffic troubles in the city a lot faster than persisting with looking at these road projects is ever going to deliver for people working and living and moving day to day in the city. If this amendment is carried, it will inevitably require us to divert money that would be being spent taking these active travel and bus improvement measures forward to spend yet more money trying to make these road projects work and with the amount of work that would need to go on trying to satisfy councillor matthew's enthusiasm for not the road project that's been approved at the moment and you can hear from the comments from opposition councillors that actually every member of the conservative group is really keen to piggyback on this amendment in order to deliver exactly the road project that has been proposed so far so this is somewhere between a white elephant and a trojan horse it isn't going to give us what we need. It isn't going to relieve the problems that people in the city face every day. And we should be spending the money that we have and the officer time that we have making improvements that can be delivered quickly. And I really urge members to reject this amendment and go with what we're proposing. Thank you. Uh, now, Councillor Fagan, followed by Councillor Tyler. Thank you. Um... Thank you, Chair. I'm, I'm a little bit confused because I, I thought the amendment was looking at a part of the, um, the um, Southern Link Road. And actually, it seems that what people are doing is talking about a scheme that, as far as I understand, is actually a failed scheme. Uh, it has already failed. As far as I understand, the, the funding was withdrawn by the Marches LEP for this scheme. Uh, the, there is no money for this scheme. There's no business case for the scheme. It takes out ancient woodland. And I, I can't understand uh, sort of sort of where, where we're going with it. This, this is a failed road scheme that we're talking about. And I want a sustainable option as much as everybody else does, but I don't see that it can be delivered by the scheme. And I just want to say that highlighting how cost of these infrastructure projects escalate, I'm referring to the City Link Road, which uh, leads to the station. It was budgeted at 27 million pounds, cost over 35 million, and that was just for 850 meters over level ground with no bridges. The Southern Link Road was budgeted in 2016 at 27 million. It's five times the distance through the hills and has several bridges, including a railway flyover on a 10 meter high embankment mm -hmm. and has will not pass any ecological scrutiny. So what we're talking about here is an amendment for a scheme that people seem to be thinking is the same road scheme and it's, it's a failed scheme already. Thank you. Thank you. And now we have Councillor <laughs> Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, it's been a very interesting debate this afternoon and um, I would just like to, to say that to retain the Southern Link route would not do anything but shift traffic from Belmont Road to Ross Road without a bridge we will call, create a new rat run. Its purpose was to link to the Western Bypass, which as stated in the report, has no planning permission. So it would have to go through the rigorous tests of looking at the environment, the economy, and what it does to serve its purpose. Council Harrington is commissioning work to look at upgrading Southern Links. This is in the way of the tram in and bridge solars. We've all gone through 10 months of, of COVID and it showed how we work differently and we move differently. More people was enjoying our fresh air, going out for walks, cycling and being free on our roads without worrying about traffic. We didn't have to rush to work. We were doing everything differently. We have to change. Everybody wants safer routes. 
better bus networks and safe buses for our children. Parents want people for our children to go to school like I did on a safe bus to get to A and B safer. We will do this through our active travel measures. We have a declared in the council in 2019 for a climate emergency that the council has to address, like government is saying to us. Without our environment, we have no future. Our children have no future and we must act now. We cannot carry on delivering huge infrastructure that damages environment. It has to be a cleaner future for everybody. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. We have now Councillor Wilding, Jimman and Hitchner, and H Councillor Hitchner will be the last speaker before we go to the vote. Councillor Wilding. Thank you, Chair. Um, so what I don't understand about this amendment is why we should bother with it. I mean, the purpose of the original recommendation, I thought, was to stop a sort of a headlong spiral down towards an ecological disaster, whereby we are sacrificing half the living planet in return for faster car journeys. In this amendment, we are presented with a list of cycling, walking schemes, which are already planned. And if not already planned, there would be no objection uh, to them being introduced since the whole focus of the council's new approach is to focus on walking, cycling and sustainable public transport. So all this amendment will do is divert money away from measures that are of the most utmost importance to combat the climate and ecological emergency that we all supported and declared, you know, only a year or so ago. So I would urge everybody to dismiss this amendment and for us to just get on uh, with the, the vote afterwards. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Ginman, followed by Councillor Hitchner. Councillor Ginman. Thank you. Uh, Chairman, I was getting a little confused a little while ago because the proposer was very clear in his opening statement that he was talking about a Southern Link route using some of the existing plans. He was not talking about, as seems to have come into common parlance within this debate, the Southern Link route as already planned. I think we need to avoid confusion here because that's absolutely vital. I very much want to see some degree of connectivity between increased and improved connectivity between the A465 and the A49 and Rotherwas. I'm very much in favour of ensuring that business gets what it really requires because that is a future. Uh, recently, I, well, last year I was in Uppsala looking at a city that is absolutely uh, on the uh, backing business, but at the same time has made fantastic strides in ensuring that there's connectivity without diesel, without fumes, without problem. I'm afraid I would love to have backed this, but I cannot, in all fairness, uh, follow this because I think it confuses matters rather than helps. And I'm grateful to Councillor Harrington for his statements uh, so far, absolutely backing the necessity to improve that connectivity. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Councillor Hitchner, and you are the last speaker. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I'm confused, like uh, uh, come to the last speaker, as, as, to, as to what this proposal is. It seems to have morphed into a debate discussing the Southern Relief Road. Uh, not a route in that area, but a specific road. And uh, that specific road is, in my mind, flawed. First of all, there's no business case that's been written that's in a, in a state that could be used. Quite a lot of work has got to be done before anything like that is done. Uh, it's got to go out to tender. Uh, the amendments have got to be made to the planning permission. Got to take into account the climate emergency. 
And Mark McDonnell were questioning whether it needed to be looked at and reviewed because of the, the, the nationwide climate emergency that's being declared. So anybody who thinks that we can just jump into this and, 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 and take it over and just do it is, is just, I'm afraid, uh, it living in another world. The, it was the first, pro, the, the, the previous plan, well, the current plan was subject to a flawed procurement process that was known before the last election uh, and it was not disclosed to the directorate, to the electorate. Um, the third point I'd like to make is extraordinarily bad value for money. It can only be justified if you build the Western Bypass. But of course, when you do the business case, you cannot refer to that Western Bypass because you're not allowed to. Uh, people have said, it's, it's been said this Southern Relief Road has to stand by itself as a separate business case. And it's much too expensive. It, all it is doing is putting traffic from the A365 to the A49 and back down into the town. So when you, when you, the people in my ward are concerned about traffic on the Belmont Road, well, what will happen is they'll move, they'll go down the Belmont Road or, or, or before it, to, to go onto the A49 and the traffic will be just the same, just as bad. If anything, it will create more smoke, more smog in the in, 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 uh, area. It'll be worse off for those people. And it really will have, as I said, it will have a minimal effect on the speed of tra traffic going into, into Hereford from my wards. It really will make no difference. Um, so so I, 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 uh, I would encourage you all to uh, reject this amendment. I, I'm, I'm baffled by it, to be honest. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Harrington, now is your moment of glory. You have three minutes to reply to the debate on the amendment. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> um, this is extraordinary. Uh, this looks like a complete deception to me. We have, we know that when we capitalise projects, we have to do a certain amount of revenue work until certainty is achieved and you are able to capitalise revenue and seek capital. And that is normally triggered at a certain point. Both for the SLR and the HTP, that was a selection of a specific route. I am astounded that the proposers of this are intimating that officers have given the impression that we won't have to decapitalise on that basis. I am astounded and seek further clarification from our officers perhaps on that. You, this road has failed. The Conservatives are making it sound now like it's the most wonderful project in the world. You had five years to deliver it and you failed to achieve it. We came in and had to preserve planning permission. You haven't completed a business case. It goes through ancient woodlands. I have Conservative asked a Conservative today telling me how much they admire and support the climate emergency and yet they have no compunction whatsoever. Talk about binary confusion, as has been mentioned several times today. This road does not work at the moment. It is a flawed scheme. It does not work alone. And councillors Foxton and Matthews, if you desire an Eastern Crossing, I can assure you that the resources and the distraction caused by this road will mean that we will not achieve that in the time required. You need to think very carefully about this. Councillor Baldson and others have said how many benefits this road brings. It does not bring benefits without a further connection. And that is the whole point here. The Conservatives are jumping on an amendment by my colleagues to, to, as a last gasp chance. They're trying to keep something that has no funding and will have to be decapitalised within the programme. It is completely the wrong way round. We need to achieve our modal shift. We need to achieve our investment in buses, which can be done quickly. And we need to get a bridge across the east. We cannot wait 10 years for the relief that the residents of South Y deserve. And they, were, they are not driving cars down the Southern Link Road. They are looking to get onto buses and decent cycling and decent, decent provisions for their children to go to school. This is... This is this is an utter deception. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that is as far, I think that is as far as I, I can go, uh, Councillor Chairman, except to say that we have given this a great amount of thought and we have come to the conclusions that were recommended both by scrutiny and by cabinet. We have 
we need to do things in order. We need to respect the climate emergency. This is the only way forward and colleagues need to trust the cabinet in their proposal. We need to reject this amendment. Thank you, Councillor. Slightly generous there to you. Um, thank you very much. Well, um, moving to the vote on the amendment. Please can Democratic Services display the proposed amendment, confirm the voting number, and that all members are available and ready to vote. Recommendation A and B be split into amendments A, B, and C as follows. Proceed with the progress on the Southwide Transport Package projects, including a southern link road between the A49 and A465, pedestrian crossing improvements to Belmont Road and A49 in the Hereford Urban Area, cycle and walking provision on and off road at A49 and A465, residential cycling schemes in Belmont and Bullingham, and consider how the approved route will facilitate a second river crossing. Stop the progress of the Western Bypass Scheme, which is included in the adopted policy, and make an amendment to the capital programme such that the Hereford Transport Plan is removed from the programme. So, voting options for, against and abstain have been added to the electronic voting system. The options are now on the screen. If you are unable to see the voting options, please access the poll icon at the bottom of your screen. There we have Chairman, it. And then just to confirm, we've got 50, 52 voting members. Thank you. So can we please cast your vote on the recommendation put to the meeting for, against, and abstain. And then press the submit button at the bottom, please. Are all the votes in? We are just waiting for one vote, Chairman, and that is now in. Then can the monitoring officer declare the results, please? Chairman, I can confirm there are 22 votes for, 26 votes against, and four abstain. The amendment is lost. The amendment is lost. So we must now go to a vote on the original proposal. Can the original proposal be displayed? Um, can we display this? Yes. The original recommendation is that the council determines to stop the progress of the Southern Link Road and Western Bypass schemes, which are included in the adopted policy and make amendments to the capital program such that the Hereford Transport Package and Southwire Transport Package projects are removed from the programme. Um, moving to the vote, I will take that on block and please cast your vote and for, against or abstain. Thank you. Are we, how many members have we got? Yeah, yeah just for the record, 52 voting members, Chair. 52, thank you. Now vote and then submit, please. So the result is... I can declare we have 27 votes for, 19 against, six abstentions, the recommendation is the resolution of council. The recommendation is the res resolution of the council has put forward. Uh, thank you very much, all of you. A very interesting debate and done with good temper, I think. And I thank you for all, all your very, very thoughtful inputs. Thank you very much indeed. And may I thank also Democratic Services. They put a huge amount of work into this very important debate. And 
I think we now come to the very last bit of work where we say thank you very much and wish you all good night. The next meeting is, of course, on the Tuesday, 12th of February, 2021, at 10 a.m., and that is the budget. Another hefty piece of work. So thanks to the members of the public and councillors for their attendance at today's meeting. And the time is now 17.42, and I declare the meeting closed. Can I check?